Hey, are you ready for vacation yet? Yep, all set. Really? That's what you're bringing? Yeah, yeah, it's the essentials. The essentials. Smoke Night Live is brought to you in part by Espinosa Premium Cigars. Amp up your daily smoke with Espinosa Premium Cigars' signature Nicaraguan character. Whether you're a Maduro maniac, a Habano junkie, or simply looking to dial your flavor intensity to 11, smoke Espinosa every day. Boom, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode 419 of Smoke Night Live. It's Friday. It's Friday Night Herf. We are hanging out, having a good time on Dojoverse.com. Make sure to grab your phone, go to Dojoverse.com, check into your favorite cigars, earn your badges, earn your black belt. Uh, it's a blast. It's what we do every day on the dojo. You never have to smoke alone on Dojoverse.com because there's always a herf in your pocket, Jordan. There's always a herf in your pocket. The grease. We got a huge show tonight, um, Jordan. Uh, we've had several bracket challenges, and the bracket challenges, Jordan, have been amazing in the past. Uh, let's go through the, the other ones just real quickly, um, just so people can remember. Go down memory lane, shall we say. The very first ever bracket challenge was the fast food bracket. And as you can see, in the finals was in and out versus Chick-fil-A. And Chick-fil-A did take the championship. By the way, that was uh, Hector and uh, Jack Tarano from Espinosa Premium Cigars that were the, uh, the guests on that particular show. Then we went into the breakfast cereal uh, bracket, which was maybe, Jordan, I would say our most controversial uh, episode of all time. Uh, yeah, that Cinnamon Toast Crunch really should have been when, in there. <laughs> when the Cinnamon Toast Crunch lost to Count Chocula uh, in round two, there was there was a, almost an uprising. There's dojo verse groups that exist solely to talk about this. To to, to solely to talk it about the fact. It was almost a dojo <laughs> revolution. Yeah. I mean, there, there, the sides, battle it was lines mutiny. were drawn. It was mutiny, and I have to say, it's I. All right. I agree with the mutiny. Like yeah. the fact, I think it was Coop that that ruined that one. He and, ruins everything. And it no. ended up being um, <laughs> Lucky Charms uh, was the winner, which I was not happy with. No, it's I, good. It's a good cereal. I was not happy with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I think Captain Crunch or Cinnamon Toast Crunch should have probably won that one. But that's a topic for yet another show. Then we went into our snack food. Um, Bracket challenge, which by the way, this one also this lives. Is the other most <laughs> this lives divisive one. in um, dojo lore because uh, Abe DeBabna had apparently never heard of Cracker Jacks, and um, so, so that he was upset that it was even in there. That lived on. By the way, the winner of that one was Crave Beef Jerky, which is a little obscure. I don't know; it seems a little obscure now, like <clears throat> looking back at it now, like the fact that Crave beat Doritos. Well, but anyways, it is, the best. It's, it is very good. Um, then we went into our video game bracket challenge, which was won by, um, Jordan, throw it up there. Super Mario, uh, Alex Tavella was on that show. Um, Juan Cancel was on that show. So, uh, at least Super, we got that one right. I think we got that one right. Uh, Super Mario took out Grand Theft Auto, um, in, in the championship. And then we went into candy bars and this was a bit of a surprise. Uh, Baby Ruth uh, did take the championship over Snickers, which I'm not super happy with that uh, outcome. But that's, you know, it's not about me, guys. It's not just about me. It's about everybody on the show. And then we went into Christmas movies. And this one, I think we got 100% right. Oh. This, this we got 100% right. Because it was in the finals. It was uh, It's a Wonderful Life versus... A Christmas story and a Christmas story. I would have been happy with either of those uh, winners in that particular um, bracket. Even, the, even the, yeah, the, the final four is great. And then finally, this was another sort of controversial one. We had the best sitcom bracket, and uh, in this one, there was there was definitely a coop factor in this one that kind of took out some of the better shows. 
Uh, and uh, Cheers did beat I Love Lucy for the championship. I think uh, Office should have gone much further. But you know what? That's Again, that's just Seinfeld. me. Seinfeld probably could have maybe made it into the... Anyways, that's where we're at right now. And tonight, guys, what we are going to determine is the best bourbon that you can get at your local liquor store that is uh, 70-ish dollars. Maybe there's a couple of exceptions in here. I mean, we had to kind of, you know, we had to kind of fudge some of the numbers just a tad. So we're going to be talking about that. And with our special guests tonight that will be on the show, first and foremost, Alec Rubin of Alec Bradley Cigars. Alec, welcome to Smoke Night Live. And are you ready for the Bourbon Bracket Challenge? What's up, gentlemen? Thanks for having me on. I know it's been a while. I am ready for this bracket challenge. Getting to see some of those past ones and some of the fuck ups there. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm gonna make the. I'm gonna make some of the right calls tonight. I don't know about the rest of you. I really, Alec. I'm really hoping that you don't screw this up. Uh, that's just sort of my main. The main goal. I probably tonight. will. <laughs> I, I probably will. But it's okay. Um, also, not as bad uh, as Coop. Not as yeah, bad as Coop. No. 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 I, I mean, come on. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Also on the line tonight is from the Bourbon Junkies, Sean Paisley. Sean, welcome back to Smoke Night Live, my friend. Are you ready for the Bourbon Bracket Challenge? I am. Um, thank you guys so much for having me. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure every time. Um, not going to be able to smoke because I was going to be at uh, Junkies headquarters, but uh, Dan has no power, so I can't mm. be there. Uh, so now I'm in my basement, and my wife doesn't let me smoke down here um, for probably obvious reasons. And uh, I got to say, I have no hope for this bracket challenge because you guys didn't get Twix off the start line. <laughs> Travesty. Yeah, that's another one. First that's ridiculous. Off. That's another one. Uh, how Good dare call. you? Good call, Sean. And <laughs> my God, you let Frosted Flakes beat Captain Crunch. Wow. I, hey, you know what, Sean? I think, <clears throat> I think we need to redo that one with you on it because I have a feeling you have a better... <laughs> Grass based on these picks, yeah, we're all just gonna cruise cereal. through this with no arguments. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I feel like we're on the right track tonight. And then in studio, we have our good buddy Connor Slump of the Thirsty Oak. How are you, my friend? And are you ready for this bracket challenge? Oh, I'm great, I'm super excited for this, and uh, I think I represent the best interests of the people. So rest assured. My vote will be used wisely. <laughs> all right, now, folks, uh, just so you know, uh, this is how it's gonna work tonight. Connor will have a vote, Sean will have a vote, Alec will have a vote, and then Jordan and I will have a combined vote because we're, we sort of have, you know, he is my son, and so we sort what? of have the same, <laughs> we sort of have the same opinion, but if, if the occasion arises where Jordan and I disagree and there's some sort of tie between all the votes, then we will go to our studio audience, Scott and Matt. Scotty of Trinity Cigar Lounge, sitting over there, the greatest cigar lounge in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, thank you, Scotty, for being here tonight. And Matt, I think you're ready to rock and roll tonight as well. All right, so let's get right into this, folks. Uh, we are going to jump right into it. Let's look at the uh, let's look at the bracket, Jordan. Let's take a let's take a peek. So we've got we have the Northwest Regional, we have the Northeast Regional, we have the Southeast Regional, and the Southwest Regional. I will run down the bourbons just super quick, real for you real quick we've got elijah craig barrel proof wild turkey rare breed as a two seed old forester 1920 as a three seed noah's mill as a four seed henry mckenna comes in at a five seed that's the uh, 10 that's the bottom bond uh peerless as a six seed knob creek 12 seven seed jack daniels single barrel barrel proof connor as an eight seed eagle rare as a nine seed blanton's as a 10 seed, Woodford Reserve double oaked as the 11 seed. The 12 seed goes to Bardstown, Black Label, Bottle and Bond. That might be the most obscure one of the night. Uh, Four Roses, a single barrel as the 13 seed. Angel's Envy uh, as a 14 seed. And then the very affordable uh, Early Times Bottle and Bond as the 15 seed. And Old Granddad 114 as the 16 seed. And if you've followed basketball uh, brackets in your life sometimes connor sometimes a low seed just it gets gets hot and goes on fire kind of like uh lucky charms <laughs> it's possible right i mean uh -huh. it's possible that it could happen i don't know yeah, yeah. I'm, excited, <laughs> sure. I'm excited to see where sure this goes 
All right, Jordan, let's get right into this. Uh, let's start with the uh, Northwest Regional uh, Bracket. And I'm going to start with our good buddy. Show, throw the, uh, that, that uh, regional up real quick. Sean, our first challenge of the night, uh, Sean Paisley of the Bourbon Junkies. By the way, if you've never uh, watched the Bourbon Junkies content on YouTube, one of the absolute greatest uh, YouTube channels. If you're into bourbon like I am, I watch their videos all the time. They make amazing content. So uh, Sean is part of that. Sean, our first battle is Elijah Craig Barrel Proof versus the very affordable Old Granddad uh, 114. Uh, what are your thoughts on this first uh, battle, and who do you think should advance? Uh, well, first off, thanks for lying to the people, saying that we make great <laughs> content. We make uh, decent at best content. Um, record would show that we probably have the most amount of like issues with anyone that does this as a career. Um, it's fantastic. But, all right, in getting down to brass tacks on the whiskey, I, I, I'm going to cast batches aside because um, there are three different batches of Elijah Craig uh, Barrel Proof every year, A, B, and C batches. Some of those have been almost whiskey of the year for us, so I'm going to have to give the early lead to Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Talk about, uh, just real quick, what are your thoughts on Old Granddad? Because that's one that I think you see in every liquor store, Sean, and, mm -hmm. and there's a possibility that that might not move on, so we might not get to talk about it again. But that's a solid uh, bourbon for folks to walk into just pretty, pretty, pretty much any liquor store and snag that yeah. bourbon and be happy with it. Yeah, it's probably going to run you like 25 bucks. It's really not that expensive. It's legacy distilled. Um, but unfortunately, it's just it's not my favorite pro profile on a whiskey. It's usually a little bit more nutty, um, which the Elijah Craig's can be as well. Um, but yeah, I just... I love the vintage old Granddad 114s. Those are probably like those are top tenor bottles for me. Um, but the the normal shelf stuff is just not not it for me. It it, it is running into a, a tough battle right off the get go. But Alec, yeah. Alec, uh, do you disagree with your buddy Sean on as much Elijah as I Craig, would love Arrow to. Proof versus Old Granddad 114? As much as I would love to disagree with Sean, I can't. Elijah Craig. Barrel proof, like you said, three batches a year. I'm personally a C batch fan. Um, I think I've owned two bottles of OGD 114 in my, you know, my bourbon journey, and I've probably owned 40 bottles of Lodge Craig Barrel Proof. So that should say enough. So we have two votes, Connor, for uh, mm -hmm. Elijah Craig uh, Barrel Proof. Uh, what are your thoughts on this battle? Well, you know, I think that Old Granddad is a fantastic bourbon for someone who's somewhat seasoned and wants something a little bit higher proof at a low price point. It seems like to get to that higher proof, you have to spend a lot of money uh, in this modern bourbon market. So I think Old Granddad definitely has a great spot in the market there. Um, but with that being said, it's up against Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, which is some of the great some of their batches are some of the greatest bourbon I've ever had which that alone, I think, triumphs value for me personally, considering that Elijah Craig Barrel Proof still is a fantastic value for what it is, around 60, 70 bucks. So I'm going to go Elijah Craig. Uh, Jordan, uh, so far it's a slam dunk for Elijah Craig. Do you have any uh, disagreements with the panel at this stage of the game? I don't think so. I mean, uh, some people are going to get mad at us that we even have the Elijah Craig on there. It's a little harder to get, but you can get it. Like when it comes out... Everyone's everyone knows when it comes out. You, you know, might be behind one of the glass the glass at one of your liquor stores, but like it's not usually too overpriced. You can get it uh, four times a year or so. Um, I think the the old granddad's good. Uh, sometimes it drinks a little bit hot. Um, you, you know, Elijah Craig can have a way higher proof than that one fourteen, but it doesn't usually drink as hot. It's got a great texture. Elijah Craig takes it easy. All right, so my uh, vote is irrelevant at this stage. It's a <laughs> slam dunk for Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. It will move on in uh, the 1 versus 16. No upsets so far, ladies and gentlemen. Our next battle, let's go to start with Alec on this one. Alec, our next battle oh, is the... Ta -ta -ta -ta, we have the Eagle Rare versus the... Now, nah, okay, I already, I've already taken some crap about this one. The uh, Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof, which technically isn't a bourbon, uh, but we it's had to throw it. We it's had, a bourbon. Is it it's a, a bourbon? bourbon? Technically, I mean, yeah. they follow all the rules. Is a bourbon. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. So they Chris, choose to call it Tennessee they whiskey. Differentiate there. Christopher Hart. Yep. You take that. The, pan, <laughs> the panel says Christopher Hart. If you're watching, because because Christopher Hart was the first one to tell me, he's like, you, you, one of those is not a bourbon. But uh, what do you think, Alec? What do you think about that battle? That's a pretty good battle. You know, um, Eagle Rare. I don't, I, really, you have to ask Sean on this. It's not considered a single barrel, um, even though it's somewhat is. I know they leave a little bit in the line, so it can't be considered a single barrel. Um, Jack Daniel's single barrel barrel proof is definitely one of the best <laughs> bottles out there and a great price. My only issue is that, and more recently, where I've been leaning is to a great bottle of Eagle Rare. I've kind of been moving away from that heavily nutty profile. Um, the proof can be super high. It's super dark, super heavy on the palate. I've definitely been picking up Eagle Rare more often, so this might be a little upsetting, but I'm going to go Eagle Rare on this one. Ooh. Alec goes Eagle Rare. I'm going to switch over to Connor uh, next on this one. Connor of the Thirsty Oak YouTube channel. By the way, some of the most hilarious content, if you like bourbon, uh, on, on, on YouTube. <laughs> I appreciate your content. I watch it all the time. Oh, what do you think about what Alex said, and how would you vote in this particular round? We're talking about an eight seed in Jack Daniels versus a nine seed in Eagle Rare. This is a tough one for me because they're – they're two contrasting profiles and kind of I, I'll reach towards each one in a completely different night, what I'm feeling. Um, but I will say that while I do think the Jack Daniel single barrel is a fantastic whiskey and bourbon, you know, technically, I Eagle Rare is what got me <laughs> into bourbon. It was one of the first bourbons I ever bought. It's a great value for a 10 year, basically single barrel. And, uh, you know, there's the they they vat it and then there's a little bit of the next barrel that will sometimes go into some of the bottles so they can't technically call it that but it's a it's a great value it's an easy drinker it's just caramel sweetness for me it's a dessert in a glass it's it, it, and it's a great entry level bourbon for i think a lot of bourbon drinkers too um who aren't used to the high proof stuff so my vote here is going to go to the eagle rare oh so we have two wow. votes eagle rare Two votes for the Eagle Rare. I think because of that, since we're at a tie, I'm going to go to Jordan next. Um, Jordan, Eagle Rare versus the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. What do you think? And we'll go. We'll let Sean finish this right. round up. Uh, Jack Daniels, the single barrel is pretty good. The barrel proof is even better. A lot of guys are like, you know, think that their bourbon snobs are instantly turned off that it's Jack Daniels. No, it's incredible. Um, it's got a great uh, texture to it, nice and nice and thick, like you like. I've never been the biggest Eagle Rare fan. I would almost take Buffalo Trace over it. Um, it's balanced. It's just like almost like too balanced. You're just like, okay, what do you give me some complexity? Give me some oomph, something. Um, I go, I go Jack Daniels on this one. All right, uh, since me and Jordan's votes are combined, um, I'm gonna agree with Jordan. So that we have a, uh, and I, <laughs> and, and I'm not just saying that, just so that we have an agreement on our vote. Um, uh, Connor, when you brought over that bottle recently of this, mm -hmm. and we were playing cornhole, it yep. was friggin', it was, um, it was, um, okay, I'm going to pour some right now. I'm just going to pour some right now. Now, this is kind of cheating in Can a I sense. Can I pour something? Because this is a barrel pick. Okay. I, well, I do think well, the barrel picks, eh, you know, hey. we The barrel you know, picks are always better. We got to yeah. do what we got to do. Better. <laughs> um, so that means that we have one uh, vote for the Jack Daniels, and we have two votes for the Eagle Rare. Sean, will you break the tie, or will we send this to the studio audience for the final determination? Well, I think both of these bottles are very, very good. I think this is a tough matchup. Oh, wait a minute. Hold um, on. Cat both cat. Hold I got on. A, I got a cat, cat cam. cam. There you go. Wait, cat what's cam. the name? What's she the just... name of the cat? This is Pepper. She just oh, wants I to love be this. On I film. love it. I love it. This is pretty normal. Every time I come down here, she's like. I, I'm going to get on dad's lap. We're going we're to be part of this stream. Um, but yeah, both of those bottles are amazing um, for different reasons. Uh, a $35 10 year product is very hard to come across. And then there's, I mean, Jack Daniels is holding up the entire state of Tennessee with what they're distilling. Um, I've always been a very, very big fan of the single barrel barrel proofs. The, the barrel picks we've had um, are usually amazing they're all very unique and i just you know i can't not go with jack daniels Ooh. it's just too good uh, i mean eagle rare is great 
But, and also, okay, both of you guys said this, and I think it, it's kind of a, like almost, I don't know, like a urban legend in whiskey now, because Freddie told us when we were just there that uh, Eagle Rare is vatted in at like 100 barrels at a time. So it, there's, I don't know where the single barrel <laughs> stuff came from. I've believed that forever and a day until he said that, and I was like, wait, do you say 100 barrels at a time for that? And he was like, oh, okay. So hmm. not a single barrel product. Mm. In your um, face. Now the, uh, <laughs> the barrel, oh the barrel yeah, so now you got yeah, oh, to vote for Jack Daniels. <laughs> Sean, I got a <laughs> rebuttal question on, for you. Sean. Okay, hold on. Oh, 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 hey, oh. Whoa, 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 I pissed some people off with that. <laughs> no, no, I'm just g- genuinely curious here. About the, yeah. for the barrel pits for the Eagle Rares, are those single barrel then? For the pits? Yes. Okay. Yep. Hold Alex, on, I got a question for Sean. Alex, it seemed like you had something you wanted to toss yeah, in. Oh, yeah. What do you got? Sean, would you say that Eagle Rare is so good that someone may want to steal it? You know, I knew this question was going to come up when, <laughs> when this bottle. Um, so if you guys don't know, we just we did an Eagle Rare pick uh, back in December. And unfortunately, it, something happened at the distribution and we never got it. It just showed up in a random store in D.C. And they wow. sold our barrel. So that's why we were just back at um, Buffalo Trace doing a pick. So you're just out to get the Eagle Rare. <laughs> yeah, no, Eagle Rare is dead to me. Um, no, everyone from Sazerac know. was great, though, um, for helping us get a, a, a makeup pick. So we got to do an E.H. Taylor pick. So Ooh, thank God nice. you didn't put that on this list because it would just win. Well, I guess that means uh, we have a uh, tie. Two, At two studio for Eagle audiences. Rare, two for, um, for the Jack Daniels. We're going to go to our studio audience, Scotty and Matt. Have, do you guys have some sort of consensus we do. Over there we that, do. We uh, are ready to go on this one. This was an easy consensus for us based on drinkability and also the fact that both of us are enjoying it right now. We are going with the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel. There we go, Love ladies and gentlemen. Too long. <laughs> the, uh, the studio <laughs> audience has spoken, which pushed Jack Daniels over the top. They will move into the next round. Uh, congratulations. I believe, Jordan, that that puts us over into the next regional, which will be the uh, north. What is it? Throw that up there real quick. There you go. Give me a bit. All right. And uh, I appreciate the studio audience on this one, uh, putting the correct (laughs) barrel forward or the bottle forward on this one. Very important. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. All right. Yeah. uh, Everyone's. I think everyone in the studio right now is drinking, except for maybe Jordan, the Jack Daniels single barrel. I got the Jack Daniels. Everybody in the studio is drinking it. All right, folks, uh, in this in this uh, bracket, uh, we have the two seed, which is the wild turkey rare breed. And I'm going to start with Sean on this one. And it is going up against another extremely affordable uh, bourbon in the early times, bottled in bond. Uh, Sean, it's up to you. Which one should move on? Uh, I feel like question. I'm getting targeted here. Um <laughs> Because early times uh, has pretty much been one of my favorite cheap bourbons for the past like five years of my life. I went through some rocky times when it was sold from Brown Foreman to Sazerac. I think the blending changed a little bit and they weren't putting out the same level of, you know, I mean, it was a cheap bottle, but still, I think it got worse. Uh, But we're back on that train and there's no way my number one ain't going to go on through Suck It Rare Breed. (laughs) <laughs> wow. wow. Early times now, folks, <laughs> you can get a bottle of early times for like 25 bucks. And it's like a liter bottle. Connor. It's a liter, yeah. Mm-hmm. Liter cola. So, uh, Connor, what do you think about what Sean just uh, said? I'm going to go to you next. We'll go to Alec after uh, you. What do you think about uh, what he uh, proposed and how would you vote? Yeah, I will. I, I, I know there was a bunch of kind of uh, negative press that it got when it switched over to Sazerac from Brown Foreman and it seems like people are still kind of hunting for the old labels on the shelves to get the Brown Foreman product. For me, every time I going on Reddit and the interwebs and, and someone is talking about how can I buy the next level of whiskey, I've been drinking for a couple months now and I want something to really step it up. Everyone always recommends Rare Breed and I think it's for great reason. Rare Breed for me has been a bit twisted sometimes i'll have it and it is amazing sometimes i'll have it and it's a bit nutty and tannic and and kind of unpleasant so it's it's kind of a this one's a a close toss-up for me Mm. so i think given that i'll probably have to go with the value pick which is gonna be the early times 
Ooh. Wow, we've got two votes for the upset. The 15 seed early times with an early two to nothing lead. Alec Rubin, what do you think? So I was hoping Sean was going to ask the question, and he didn't. So I was hoping he was going to ask whether it was the Brown Foreman or the Sazerac early times. And he did not ask, which means it's the Sazerac early times. And I just so happen to be sipping on some rare breed non chill filter tonight. And I do hey, think that's not that regular rare breed. breed. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I'm aware. I'm aware. Well, it is. It's just not. It's just not Joe Filter. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. He's yeah. he's loaded there. He's triple fisted. If it, if we were talking about the Brown Foreman bottle, I would have said early times, but we're not. So I got to give it to the bird. Shuck it, Sean. Sean, mm. suck it, Sean. What was that? Shuck it, Sean. Oh! Shuck, shuck it, Sean. Shuck, okay. shuck it, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Sean. I like that. That sounds like a new T-shirt. Bump. New T-shirt idea. <clears throat> shuck it, Sean. All right, Jordan. Uh, Jordan, we've got uh, two votes for the affordable early times, mm. which I called easy times earlier in the week. Easy times. Easy times. <laughs> Your name. <clears throat> what do you think, Jordan? Uh, uh, yes. Are you going to put this ah, into a tie? Or, what a um, stinking matchup we got going on here. These are like, one is like the cheaper end of like the, the bourbon that I just have in store on, you know, at any given day, my daily. And then the other one is like the higher end one that I have as my daily. <laughs> like these are These are the two that I would recommend as like, your go-tos. Um, I do think that the, the older juice was a bit better in the early times, and I can't stink in, for whatever reason, I can't get enough of the rare breed lately. I have to go rare breed on this one. Mm. Dang it. Unfortunately, Jordan, I'm going to disagree with you on this one. Ooh. No. Mm. And I'm going to agree with the early Arm times. So which our, our votes like doesn't uh, count. Our <laughs> votes don't count. They, they knock each other out, which means... We go to no, we don't, right? We right? Can't, right? We can't. That's huh? early, early times. Early times takes it yeah, in you a just made uh, that one no fun in Jeez. a technical in a technical knockout. A Doesn't matter how we got there. We in got a there. technical <laughs> knockout. Now here's the here's the beauty of this, Connor. Uh, as we talked about with uh, old granddad, uh, folks that maybe want to dip their toe so into bourbon, uh, early times is ridiculously affordable. Yeah. Oh, so. it's, it's a great choice. Absolutely. Now, in fairness, just yeah. to be able to say our piece on this, um, we came to the consensus that even though we do agree that the uh, Brown Foreman version was a little bit superior, that we would have still stuck with the early times as our choice on this based on the price point and overall drinkability and the fact that I consistently bring that bottle over to the studio when i come over so there we go so we have our first upset of the night boys a 15 seed knocks down the two <laughs> seed and we have a uh, a winner early times moves on all right i'm gonna start with you alec on this next uh challenge i don't even um, want to play anymore <laughs> well, you're just informing the audience what not to pick. <laughs> and this one, uh, I, I, I can sense already that this could be a controversial uh, battle. Um, we've got Knob Creek 12 as a seven seed up against Blanton's, which is a very polarizing bourbon, uh, Alec, as the 10 seed. Uh, what do you think? Uh, who should move on? Uh, I don't think this is controversial. I think that for most people – they're going to agree with me on this one and go with the Knob Creek 12. Mm -hmm. It's a better proof. Bland's is overrated. It's, it's a great bottles occasionally if you get, a, if you get a good single barrel, but not something I'm gravitating toward all the time as where with that Knob Creek, that's an easy, that's an easy pickup. All right. That's so Alec is going up. with the Knob Creek uh, 12. I'll go to you, Connor. Uh, what do you think? Man, I, um, Blanton's just makes me mad. <laughs> Why does it make you mad? Blanton's was one of those bottles. When I got into whiskey, that was like the golden, the golden egg. It was the golden ticket that yeah. you have under you have beat bourbon, mm. and that set it up for one of the most disappointing experiences for me. Once I got a bottle and I tasted it, it was extremely underwhelming, and um, I think. You might as well go get an Eagle Rare if, you're, if you want something great from Sazerac. It it stands out on the shelf. I have 100 bottles on display at my house, and people come over that don't know anything, and they're like, whoa, what's that grenade-looking bottle? So it stands out to people. It is it is it it has that value, I guess. Um, but for me, if I'm going for something to drink and something that doesn't make me mad, I'm going for the Knob Creek 12, which is a fantastic value. It's right around 60 bucks. 
Um, it seems to be popping up. It kind of was hard to find for a little bit, but now, I mean, not nearly as hard as Blanton's is, um, but now I can find it pretty consistently. And I think it's a great value. It's a great bourbon. It's a slightly higher proof point at around 100 proof. So I'm going the Knob Creek 12 on this one. All right, so we have two votes uh, for the Knob Creek. Uh, Sean, will you disagree with our esteemed panel members or, or will you push Knob Creek into the next round? And by the way, the most important thing is, can you hand me that cigar cutter right there, please, Connor? <laughs> All right, Sean, what do you think? Um, I will say every time we blind uh, the Mashville 2 lineup, Blanton's always somehow wins. Mm, um, okay. Okay. I, I, I don't understand it, but it just it happens. We always we always say that we hate Blanton's, and then it just wins, and we're like, well, we're wrong. Um, but I mean, white sheet to white sheet on this one, you're getting almost double the age usually on average with the Knob Creek Twelve. You're getting a higher proof point. Um, I think the value is better on the Knob Creek Twelve, and it's a pretty tasty little pour. Uh, I would have to agree with both of them. Why, Sean? I just got to ask you. Um... Why is Blanton so polarizing in the bourbon world? Like you're on, if you're in any kind of Facebook groups at all, there's people that just absolutely freaking hate Blanton's and there are people that love Blanton's. What, what is the deal? Why, why is that? Uh, I mean, it's like what uh, we were just talking about there, um, that it was the, you beat bourbon when you got Blanton's because it's the, the most, you know, sensationalized bottle. Everyone, like you're saying, knows the shape. Uh, like you're just instantly gravitated right towards it, and it's not bad, but people just pay absorbent amount of price to have it. Um, it just it feels more or less like a a statusy thing than mm. you know wanting to drink bourbon, and that's what uh, the the snobbery comes in a little bit, where people are like, there's so many better bottles that you don't have to pay you know two or three x the sticker price just to enjoy. All right, now Jordan, I know. Um, it doesn't matter now because it's a slam dunk. Knob Creek will will move on, but um, you recently uh, were at Terrence's house down in uh, Miami. Who? Uh, Terrence the Riley. Night of our lives. And um, <laughs> he gave you the gold, and you said that was well. Really, really yeah, good. The, the higher some of those higher end blends are stinking phenomenal. <laughs> Gotta use my. <laughs> Stickers. Uh, yeah, yeah, it gets really good. But I, I agree with what you guys are saying. Like, it's kind of like Makers is like the lower end of that. Like, oh, you like that's what you like though. If you drink, if you drink bourbon, you drink Makers, and then you like you get you know a little bit more, and you're like, no, actually, Makers is Makers sucks. And then like Blanton's is like the next level up. Like, I remember when I was like trying to elevate my bourbon game, it was like I was trying Booker's, I was trying like Baker's and the Knob Creek Single Barrel, and then there's okay, let's try Blanton's, and it was like, oh, this is weak. Um, I will say that Blanton's has one of the more unique notes that I've noticed. Like it has this like distinct apple note to it that you can pick out every time. Uh, but it's just it's, the texture is it's weak. Um, you guys have all said the same kind of stuff. It's just not not uh, not worth it for what you're you know hunting it down and everything. You can get it. It's not the hardest bourbon to get. You can get it. But uh, I'll, I'll take Knob Creek. It's got a lot more complexity to it. All right, that's a unanimous vote, ladies and gentlemen. Knob Creek uh, moves on in the Northeast Regional, which brings us to the Southeast Regional, and I will uh, kick this one off with Sean of the Bourbon Junkies. Sean, we have the number three seed, Old Forester 1920, versus the number 14 seed, Angel's Envy. Uh, talk a little bit about these two bourbons and uh, which one should move on. Yeah, so um, I'll, I, you know, I will say that Angels Envy Cast Strength uh, is their their limited that they do every year. It's probably one of my favorite Finnish bourbons. So it's a port Finnish bourbon, phenomenal at cast strength. Unfortunately, regular Angel Angels Envy at ninety proof kind of you know just feels a little lackluster. And you know, whenever people ask me for an affordable bottle that I really enjoy and I can just go pick up anywhere. I feel like nine times out of 10, 1920 is the, the cookie cutter answer I give. Um, it's a great product. You know, you're getting a, a, a nice proof point. <sighs> I got to go with 1920. All right. That's a, uh, that's a well said, uh, Alec Rubin. Uh, what do you think of the, uh, old Forester 1920 versus angels and the, who should I got to agree with Sean on this one. Like, like you said, on the Angel's Envy, uh, on the limited edition, Bradley and I actually celebrated with that bottle when we got uh, number seven with uh, Gatekeeper and Cigar Aficionado. But we're not. We're talking about the re regular Angel's Envy, and 1920 was kind of 
my lead into higher proof whiskey. Probably one of the first time I had something in that 115 proof range and it just holds a great place in my heart. And over the two, if I'm, if I'm at a bar, I'm, I'm getting the 1920. Connor, do you, uh, can you, are you going to break this is, are you, uh, well, or, or is it going to just be uh, a roll here? Well, we'll see. Um, I will say <laughs> I'm a little offended of Angel's Envy to drop the box on their cast strength release. That was offensive mm. and raised the price. Uh, the, the bottle's way cooler though. It I, is a cooler. The bottle box. itself is way, way cooler. And nine times out of 10, <clears throat> I, I throw away the boxes. So I was like, all right, I'm okay with it. Uh, but I, the I tenth, like the nice the pretty bottle. The time you hang on to the box. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, when it comes to their standard offering, I think it's, I think it's decent. Um, it's cool bottle shape. It stands out, which is, which is cool. But we're talking about what tastes better. And Old Forester 1920 is one of my favorite bourbons I've ever had. Um, it's, it's kind of, this is a easy one for me. Um, I love the Brown Foreman Old Forester profile. I love how sweet it is. It's at a great proof point. You can find it anywhere. It's at a great price point. I, I'll always go for the 1920. What do you guys think about um, uh, some of the commenters are saying Angel's Envy is not technically bourbon? Is that the one the guy was re referring to? Yeah. <laughs> it's because they had to change the it's label finished. of how things are done now. It's bourbon finished in port wine cask or however they, they denominate it now. It's still bourbon. Come on. Come on. <laughs> but it's not People, It's just, uh, it's bourbon Can finished bourbon in. So not be that would. Finished in something? That would make it a uh, craft specialty spirit, uh, technically to the TTB, but as most of us as a bourbon enthusiast would just call it a bourbon. I'm, I'm not going to split hairs on this one. All right, uh, Jordan, it's, it's, uh, we have uh, a consensus. It's going to be the old forester. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you would have gone, uh, old forester on this one as yeah. well. I, Angel's Envy, I, I don't like hate a lot of bourbons. I hate, I hate Angel's Envy. Like, <laughs> Why do you I, hate I just, it? I just hate it. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's like, um, uh, Woodford Reserve, you know, like, but more expensive. Like it's just all honey. Um, uh, I feel like anytime you meet like a, it's like a, a girl's bourbon, like a mm. female's bourbon. Like anytime that's what, you meet, that's what I was going to say. Anytime you meet a girl that thinks she's like a bourbon enthusiast, they like Angel, Angel's Envy. Like it's just weak. Um, Old Forester's got that brown sugar that I need, baby. Yeah, yeah. So I think it, this is a, a unanimous vote on this. The Old Forester moves on. All right, Connor. Um, I'm going to go with you on this next one, my friend. Uh, we have the number six seed, uh, Peerless Small Batch Bourbon, which is a little bit more expensive. I, I tried to keep the pi price point around 70 but this typically is more like 90 to sometimes $100. Uh, but the number six seed is the Peerless Small Batch Bourbon versus the number 11 seed, Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. What do you think, Connor? Well, this is an easy one for me. Uh, the Peerless Small Batch, it's, it's a good small batch. It's a good bourbon. It's a good whiskey. Um, but the Double Oaked for me was transcendent. It was... One of the when I first got into whiskey, about three bottles, and Woodford Reserve Double Oaked was one of them, and it was the first one that I really started liking, along with the Eagle Rare Ten Year. Um, both of those are what really catapulted me into this hobby, and even to this day, I will go back to a Woodford Reserve Double Oaked, and there's nothing that I've been able to taste that is like it. I think it's consistently amazing. It's sweet. It's easy to drink. Um, and it's at a relatively reasonable price point around that $55, $60 range. So for me, I'm going to go for the Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. Alec Rubin, uh, what do you think uh, between these two bourbons? First off, Connor and Sean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but if we're getting technical, the uh, Woodford Double Oaked is not technically bourbon either because it is finished in the second, yeah, second of the barrel. <laughs> not a bourbon. It is. But oh, it is a bourbon. It is bourbon. <laughs> it is a bourbon. It's not. It's not finished in a second barrel. They use new barrels. As long as you use a new barrel every time, um, ah, okay. you can continually call Palmer. it bourbon. Yeah. Regardless. It's bourbon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Last words. laughs> Regardless. Um, every time I drink Woodford Double Oak, it is way too sweet for me. It is just not my profile. I I don't I don't dig it at all. And I'm going to go with the Peerless on this one. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to let Sean go last on this one. Jordan, um, what do you think between these two? 
Uh, I don't like double oaked stuff. Like it tastes phony. It tastes like you, you know, you're flash cooking something. You're you're cheating time. You know, like <laughs> cheating time. <laughs> I don't know. It's like it just tastes phony to me. Like the way it's over oaked. Uh, and I I feel like this is not like actually giving Peerless any sort of real credit, but the, like you gotta acknowledge like that's one of the coolest bottles that there is. On yeah, the market. Is. But it, it does kind of just have the profile that I'm looking for uh, in a bourbon. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna go Peerless on this one. I would have a tough one. I have a tough time with this particular one because some of the peerless that I've had just seems real hot to me, like just super over hot, you know, mm -hmm. and I wasn't jazzed with it. But I, I will agree, at least as far as going up against the double oaked, I would give a slight nod um, to the peerless. So Jordan and I's vote goes to the peerless. Uh, Sean, that means that you can either put this into a tie or one of these will move on. Bring her home, Sean. <laughs> well, um, I have to say, when I first started getting into bourbon, uh, one of the first expensive bottles I would re regularly rebuy happened to be Woodford Reserve Double Oak. I am a big sucker for Double Oaked uh, stuff. I love that oaky profile. Brown Foreman always has a very, very sweet profile. I love that bourbon so much, and it's probably... Uh, one of the bigger ones that me and Dan still disagree about, like, till this day. He would definitely go peerless, but I am 100% going Woodford Reserve Double Oak. Mm. Oh, so where does that put wish, us? That's tight, right? I wish Dan was here. Go. To the, you know, studio audience hasn't let me down yet. Um, <laughs> I guess that does put us into a tie, right? It's 2-2. Two, two. It's 2-2. Two, two. Um, so we have to go to uh, Maddie. And Scotty, do you guys have a consensus between we the do. two of you? This was a definite discussion throughout all of your guys' conversation that we've had. And I mean, we enjoy the, you know, Woodford double oaked and appreciate it for what it is. Oh. Uh, recency bias we'll kind of comes into play a little bit for this on us in the fact that we have drank Peerless a little more regularly and have it in the studio a little more regularly. And with that being said, we are going to go peerless Ooh, on this. Wow. So just looking at the comments here, I think we have a new Cinnamon Toast Crunch <laughs> rival. <laughs> really? I haven't seen a single Oof. peerless. I'm counting like what? Are, are you the first one I see comments. Eric Wiggs. Peerless uh, is where it's at. Uh, Boom. I don't know. Well, you got to be on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm on both, baby. Uh, so peerless moves on. And that was a... Uh, uh, six versus an eleven. Eric is a paid actor. And yeah, I'm a paid actor. So, uh, <laughs> that was a commenter. Yeah. That means a plant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Let's move on to the uh, Southwest Regional. This is our last regional of the night. I will start with Alec Rubin. Of Alec. by the way, uh, me and Connor are sitting here smoking the new uh, fine and rare Alec yeah. Bradley. And I got to say, Alec, this is a delicious cigar. You know what's so good about this cigar? Thank you. It, it's juicy. I love a juicy flavored juicy cigar. Like, there is that sort of like sourdough note that comes out right off the get go. Like as soon as I lit it and I have not had the new one yet. This is my first go around at it. So this is sort of a first impression for me. Connor, this is a freaking great cigar. I'm impressed. I am. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's been great. Make sure, you, make sure you save it for um, after the bracket. Save a little bit. All right. We well, I, I'll do my I best. Know. I'm. I'll do my it's best. Good. Yeah, I know. It might. It, it might be two or three cigars gone. in this thing. Uh, <laughs> all right, <laughs> Alec. I'm starting with you on this one. This is the number four seed Noah's Mill versus the number thirteen seed uh, Four Roses Single Barrel. This is not the single barrel barrel proof Four Roses. Uh, in case uh, people are trying to follow along, this is the just only. the single barrel one, which is forty to fifty dollars. The only reason we didn't let's uh, do a bracket challenge was just. Four old uh, four rows of single barrel barrel. Yeah. The, the reason that we yeah. couldn't uh, the reason that we couldn't do the barrel proof version is just too hard to get now. It, there was a time there was a time you could get that, but now you really can't. So this is just the single barrel version. Alec of Noah's Mill four rows of single barrel, which would move on should move on. I'm gonna be honest. I'm a little indifferent on this one. Um, I don't gravitate toward either bottle all that often, but. Um, if there's, if, if we go based off the one I've probably purchased more throughout my bourbon career, I'll say that it's probably been Noah's Mill, even though I want to go four roses on this. 
um, just because the single barrel picks that I really enjoy, but the uh, I'm, I'm going to go Noah's Mill. All right. Uh, Noah's Mill for Alec. Um, Connor, I'll go to you next. Um, hmm? Out of these, uh, which should move on? Well, I think the the Four Roses single barrel is a, a great bourbon by all means. Um, it's definitely a step up from the small batch. But I do think that the Noah's Mill, for me, has always been kind of takes it to that next level. Um, where will it's at right now with their pricing and all their stuff? It seems like it's like one of the like the last value left at Willet. Um, but for whatever reason, it's very polarizing. I find that in the bourbon groups, nobody seems to be talking about Noah's Mill. A lot of people don't think it's any good. But for me, every time I've had it, it's been fantastic. And we did a blind, me and Matt over in the audience there, um, did a blind at a restaurant uh, against, uh, there was Old Rip, um, there was some 291 stuff, and uh, I think even 1920. And the Noah's, the Noah's Mill won the whole crowd over. And it was a strong majority number one from everyone, including me and Matt. So for this one, it's, it's an easy one. It's the Noah's Mill for me. All right, uh, Sean Paisley, uh, Bourbon Junkies. Uh, what do you think of uh, these two picks, and who should move on? Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of with Alec. I don't usually gravitate too heavy towards either Four Roses or Jim Beam that often. Um, but I will say the Noah's Mill, is it's, it's okay for me. I've never found myself in a bar looking and like, oh, they got Noah's Mill, I guess I could drink that. Um, I just... Something about the the beam profile is just not my jam. Um, so for that reason, I'm gonna have to go for four roses. Oh wow, uh, Jordan, we have uh, two for Noah's Mill and one for the four roses. I'll go before you go this time, yeah. Jordan, because um, I normally don't. But I gotta say, I'm a Noah's Mill guy through and through. I love it. With any chance I get to get Noah's Mill, especially there was a. a fr- there was a time when we go to the PCA uh, cigar trade show in Las Vegas where it was, for some reason, it was only like $40. This is until something. like last year. Yeah. And so like, it was like, oh, like this is obviously this is, I'm going to buy like two or three bottles of this. Um, I'm a big Noah's Mill guy. Jordan, I kind of think you probably are, are agreeing with me on this one. We're probably going to vote Noah's Mill on this. Yeah. I, I mean, Four Roses, the single barrel barrel proof is what like won me over as a Four Roses guy. But then when you go back to the single barrel, it does, doesn't have it. Um it's got like it's got this kind of interesting like uh, fruity stone fruit kind of a note to it, but Noah's Mill like you can it's one of the better bourbons I think that you can get, and it's got the the body that you want. It's kind of like Booker's back in the day, um, and so I I go to it pretty frequently. I go to Noah's Mill. Sean, you are a loser in this round. I you know I'm I'm willing to let this one go because I I'm, you know I I really didn't love Four Roses, so when I saw that matchup, I was like. I'm good with losing this one. Like, right. I know I do remember you guys being big uh, Noah's Mill fan. All right, so uh, Noah's I think Mill... Jim Beam also does cigar whiskey well. Like most of their offerings, I think just go with cigars well. Now, I, I, is this Willet product? I thought it was. Is, is this? I thought it was. Oh, wait, Willet I product. keep saying Beam. It's yeah, Willet. I'm so yeah, sorry. It was Willet too. Willet. Yeah. Right. I, I, yeah, I because it's. Go, I hate to go against yeah, the bourbon nope, you're right. because I know you're. You know way more about this. Than I, know, I, I almost didn't want to ask that. I was like, oh. no. It's <laughs> it's just been a very I very it was long like a day. Respectful <laughs> correction for me. Right. It's like, I'm not going <laughs> to nope. call Connor. Adam. I'm just going to drop <laughs> that it's Beam. I am shocked that Chat's just like, is he on drugs? Not even close. No, just just long days. That's okay. Uh, I will, uh, Sean, I will let you uh, redeem yourself uh, with this next round being the first one to comment on it. We have Henry McKenna, 10 year, which uh, won like whiskey of the year a few years back, uh, bottled and bond. This goes for eh, 50 to 70 bucks. It's a five seed versus this is maybe the one of the more obscure ones of the night. The uh, Bardstown Black Label bottled and bond, which is also very affordable, coming in around 40 to $50. Fifty dollars. Uh, what do you think about those two, Sean? And which should move on? Uh, um, both of those I do enjoy. Uh, some of the McKenna's because because of how they're uh, done. Like some of those batches are freaking phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. Dan one time went into a liquor store up north. He was like side by siding, and they were like discounting them like way below what they should be. And he was like, dude, I'll buy these. And it was right before everything went up to $70 in Michigan. And he got like two bottles that were like, dude, this stuff is phenomenal. 
Um, the Bardstown, the the Hunter Proofer is not my favorite of their um, the the discover. They're not the discovery. The their uh, cheaper offerings. Origins. Yep. Origins. Uh, I like the the uh, Origin White Label ninety five proof bourbon probably a little bit more than the the black one, but I don't think either of them can stack up against a good Henry McKenna. So for that reason, I'm going with that. All right, so uh, Sean goes with Henry McKenna. Uh, Connor, I'll go to you. And then Alec, uh, what do you think about these two? I would agree with a lot of what Sean said about how good those Henry McKennas can be. Um, But for me, when I'm looking at it in where it's at now, at the price point of the Henry McKennas, comparatively, and and, and kind of, and I feel like for me, the Henry McKennas have gone down a little Mm. bit in quality. And so comparing that to the Origin Series Black Label, which is a relatively new release and it came out and I've tried the full lineup. And for me, that was a clear favorite. Um, it's one of the best weeded bourbons I've ever had. Um, and I'm, I'm not a huge weeded bourbon guy to start with. So it really stood out to me for that reason. And I think one of the biggest advantages or, or, or plus points for me on, on the origin is how consistent it is. Um, I don't know if it's something that has to do with their, their, barrel process. I know they have kind of this infrared toasting system that they swear by. Um, and I, but the consistency of it, anytime I've grabbed a bottle, it's always tasted the exact same and I've been really impressed with it. So if I, if I see two of them next to each other, I'm going to be reaching for the black label. Oh, so we've got a, uh, we've got one for Bardstown. We've got one for Henry McKenna. That means we go to our good buddy, Alec Rubin. Alec, what do you think? This is really a toss up for me. I like both bottles a lot. Um, they're the same proof. They, I am probably a little bit more of a Bardstown fan than I am a Heaven Health fan. But if I'm just being honest, if I'm going to reach for one on the shelf over the other one, it's going to be the Henry Kenna Tenure. And I just bought two bottles recently for, I think, 64 bucks a bottle and have killed them both already. So just an easy drinker. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy it. Not every you know, bottle is as good as the next one, but it's okay. I still really, I really enjoy that bottle. So I'm going to go with the Henry McKenna. All right. So we have two votes for Henry McKenna, one vote for Bardstown. Uh, I'm going to go to Jordan, but Jordan, before I go to you, I do have this, I have to say, I have this roller coaster opinion of Henry McKenna, mm. Yeah, you know, because like back in the day, like I was like, yeah, it's okay. And then I, 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 and then when it got whiskey of the year, it started getting expensive. And I was like, oh, like, you know, I, and maybe it was like a psychological that I really liked it. And then I got mad at it again because I was like, oh, now it's $70. Now I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off at this bourbon and now I don't like it again. But then time goes by and I get used to that price point and I buy it again and again and again. And I like it again and again. So like I've gone like from, from liking it to not liking it to liking it to, you know, like back and forth, Jordan. What would you think uh, between these two? Both are great bourbons. This is a tough round. Yeah, I, 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 I like what you said right there. I've, I've found that as well. Um, I like them both. Connor kind of introduced me to the Bardstown. Um, I haven't had too much of it, uh, whereas I feel like I've, you know, I've been drinking a Kenna since like 2012. Like that's, I'm very familiar with it. Uh, I think it has a bit of a longer, a little bit more complex, lingering finish on it. And for that reason, I'll go with McKenna. I will agree with Jordan, so we do not need to go to the studio audience. Uh, McKinnon moves on, and by the way, uh, Nathan McKinnon is the best <laughs> hockey player, <laughs> best <laughs> hockey player in the world right We're now. Two MVPs this year. Two boys. MVPs: Nikola Jokic and Nathan McKinnon. So there we go. McKinnon moves. Uh, so, uh, folks, I think that's it for the regionals, right, Jordan? Yeah, that's the it for the it. regionals. So when we come back, we are going to talk about an exciting new product that's coming out that you guys are going to want to get your hands on. And, of course, we'll finish off the bracket and find out what is the best bourbon that you can get eh, readily available at your local liquor store. But before we get there, folks, this show is sponsored by JR Cigars, one of the world's largest online cigar stores. JR's inventory ranges from everyday bundled cigars to incredibly high-end boxes, plus a large selection of cigar accessories. Enjoy the best prices on your favorite brands such as Romeo, Julieta, Monte Cristo, Crown Heads, Davidoff, Espinosa, and many more. Make sure to try one of their exclusive lines such as the Drew Estate Nightshade or my personal favorite, the limited edition Cigar Dojo 10th Anniversary Champagne by Perdomo. Celebrate over 50 years 
of excellence and stock up on your favorite cigars today. Smoke My Life is also brought to you by Espinosa Premium Cigars. Espinosa Cigars was the Cigar Dojo's first ever Cigar of the Year winner. And since then, they have consistently placed their cigars on our coveted year-end list, placing more than any other brand in the last decade. Whether crafting a full-bodied Maduro at the San Latano factory, or whipping up a zesty Habano at the fan-favorite La Zona factory, or heck, even serving up a knuckle sandwich with Guy Fieri, Espinosa packs the flavor that craft cigar fanatics crave. Get into the La Zona state of mind with Hit releases such as the 601 Blue, Espinosa Habano, Murcielago, or the opulent orange treat that Eric Espinosa himself dubbed La Range. With a lineup this good, you'll have no excuse but to smoke Espinosa every day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 419 of Smoke Night Live. It's the Bourbon Bracket Challenge. We are chatting with Alec Rubin of Alec and Bradley Cigars, Sean Paisley, of the Bourbon Junkies, and our good friend, Connor Slump of the Thirsty Oak, sitting right next to me. We have gone through the uh, first round of picks, the regionals. But before we get there, guys, I want to talk about a little something I have in my hot little hands right here. Alec, what do I have in my hands, and what can we tell folks that is coming their way uh, within the next, I don't know how long? Uh, let's drink it. T- let's drink it and talk about it. What, what, what do I have here? So we're looking, um, it's going to be releasing in just about eight, nine days. We're looking at uh, April April 22nd. So Mm -hmm. if you haven't been following along, Alec Bradley is doing a new series called the Uncut Series. And what the Uncut Series is, is where we go, we we go find a barrel of bourbon and pair specifically with a cigar in mind. So um, we did... Two bottle, uh, two barrels of Starlight so far, and we did a barrel of Rebel Cast Strength. But uh, the most recent one that we did was a bottle of Evernor Spirits with uh, Dan and Sean Paisley. And what we did was we paired the Fine and Rare with it, uh, the most recent Fine and Rare. So I think Sean, Dan, and I went through 23 barrels in their rickhouse to find the perfect barrel for find a rare me and Sean definitely disagreed on um, what we thought might be the best barrel for the pick, but you know what? That's okay. Everyone has a different opinion and really what the experience is supposed to bring is, um, you know, a bottle of whiskey and a cigar both have their own profiles, but when you can meld the two together and get a completely unique experience different than if you had them separately, I always see that as a win. And um, when I originally drank the whiskey with while smoking the cigar, I thought the profile on this whiskey was completely different. Drinking it tonight, I see it's it's almost completely different from what I thought it was. So when you add the cigar in, it just completely changes the experience of both. Sean, what can you add to um, this bourbon? What can, you know, I got to say, Connor, just right off the bat, uh, this is like a first impression show. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a sweetness to this mm-hmm. that's very nice, which goes with the sort of juicy note of the cigar. Alec, I I like what you've – I like this pairing. Uh, Sean, what can you tell us about uh, the bourbon itself? Yeah, so uh, what Alec ended up picking, which is what he always wanted to pick, um, what we have <laughs> is a seven-year light whiskey. So this was distilled by MGP. Um this is the the bottle. He gets his nice own little pick sticker. So that's mm. that's Alex. Um, so that's uh, ninety nine corn, one one percent malted barley. Um, so entry proof on like light whiskey is over one hundred and twenty five. So that's one of the denominators or used barrels stuff like that. Um, most of MGP stuff goes into used Jack Daniels barrels, and that's why it's not a bourbon. Um, but this is going to melt your face off a little bit with proof. It's 131 proof. Ooh, I do believe it. Yeah. 131. Yep. So 131 Whoa. proof. It is very warm. Um, but it's crazy it cause has, it doesn't, it, the, co- the color of it is, doesn't look like it. Would yeah. Be. That's, that's what happens when you use those used barrels. So they, uh, they don't, uh, pull so much out of the, um, <laughs> like you don't get that oaky bit in there so much. Light whiskey is usually a little bit more sweeter. This has like a, a nice little like creme brulee note on it for me. Uh, maybe a little bit of brown sugar note. 
Um, but honestly, it is fantastic. We we had narrowed da- down, I think, I don't remember how many barrels before we even started pairing them. And this one was always a front runner for Alec. Uh, Alec, how will folks uh, get their hands on it when it becomes available? So it is dropping. Uh, it will be on all of our social media platforms. Uh, all the way it works with Meta is it, we can't post a link directly, but it will be posted in the comments. Or you can go to directly to bourbonoutfitters.com. Just look up Alec Bradley. It's going to be dropping 10 a.m. April 22nd. Wow. I can't wait. This oh, is it has re- like a, really good. An espresso note to it. Perhaps so what well. I find is when you, it, like Sean said, it has that creme brulee note. But when you pair it with the cigar, I find it opening up and being a little bit fruitier than like almost mm. that dark sugar. So I, I get, you know, these, you know, beautiful, you know, citrus notes and maybe like red fruit notes that you don't know, like you wouldn't get just from drinking the whiskey. Now, Sean, did you say it was 99% corn? Yes. You know, what's crazy about that is I don't get a corn note at all. Like, and and I'm, I'm glad for that. Like that to me, that's a good, that's a good thing. Like I I prefer like typically like Colorado distilleries and there's some good ones, you know, laws and, and, you know, Stranahan's makes their whiskey and stuff, but I almost always get this corn note and it's a little off putting to me, but I don't get mm-hmm. that at all with this particular uh, whiskey. Um, MGP does really, really good light whiskey um, is all I can attribute that to. We do have barrels that obviously taste more like a Canadian, you know, style corn whiskey, which would be a 99 one as well. Um, but sometimes you get some magic. Mm hmm. Yeah. Very cool. I I cannot wait. So so this is the the uncut version. What is this for, Alec? So Alec Bradley does his uh, uncut series where we pair cigars with whiskey. Uh, we go and choose single barrels at all different distilleries, and this will be uh, batch four of the uncut series. Fantastic. All right, and folks. This is, you said to, to pair with the fine and rare. That's mm-hmm. this will be paired. That, with that'll the fine be available. And rare. In okay. the package, um, if you're buying from Bourbon Outfitters, you can buy the fine and rares. Uh, is it a two-pack, Alec? Yeah, so you get the bottle and two fine and rare for ninety nine ninety nine. Sick. I, Which what is a I phenomenal really, deal. I love oh, yeah. you, you. Somebody, I don't know phenomenal. if it was Sean or Alex said the fruity note. Phenomenal. Um, and the cigar has that. Like I before we even taste the bourbon, I I said it has that kind of juicy sort of note to it so this this mm-hmm. is a fantastic pairing good job alec wow. we're so proud of you look at you go it was it, it was definitely a group effort sean may have been wrong on the barrels that he wanted to choose but <laughs> uh, um, uh we it was definitely a group effort there was what yeah. six of us that uh, spent two days doing this pairing yeah um and yeah to what you guys are saying i think that uh the whiskey when you have it without the the cigar, you're like, oh, that's really good. And then you put them together, and you're like, oh, I can see why these were selected. Right. Um, the 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 smoke really lingers in the mid palate of that uh, whiskey, and it's super oily, and everything just kind of holds on, and it's it's fantastic. Yeah, the cigar, I am absolutely. I mean, obviously, that's my my that's my jam is the cigar part. I of like it. it cigars. It's it's fantastic, Alec. This is a this is this is a banger of of a stick. Very very good. All right, let's get back to our bracket challenge. We're down to eight, Connor. Bracket! We're down to eight, brother. Down to eight. All right, Jordan, show us the uh, here. We there's the full bracket. Uh, so we've got Elijah Craig uh, moved on, uh, the uh, Jack Daniels moved on, the Noah Mill moved on, the Henry McKenna moved on, the early times upset. That's dumb. Upset. <laughs> <laughs> the rare breed and moved on. Uh, Knob Creek uh, 12 uh, beat Blanton's, and the 1920 uh, Old Forester moved on over Angel's Envy, and of course the somewhat controversial uh, argumentative round Peerless did knock out Connor's favorite. Sorry, Connor, but the uh, double, double oaked. Uh, it, it died. It died on the vine. So uh, let's start, Jordan, on the uh, top left there in that bracket. That's the North uh, West Regional. If, I, if I'm getting that right, and let's look look at that uh, bracket real quick. All right, Connor, Oof. we are down to. I'm going to let you start on this one, Connor right. Slump. Uh, we've got the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Versus the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof, mm-hmm. both fantastic whiskeys. 
which should move on to the final four? Well, for me, this one is an easier decision than even the last round with the Elijah Craig. With the old granddad against the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, it was kind of tough because they're, they're two different whiskeys. Get One's a value here. whiskey, and one is one of the greatest whiskeys I've ever had <laughs> at a high proof point. Now that it's against the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof, this feels like an easy win for the Elijah Craig because it does mm. what the Jack Daniels does, but better. It's a better high proof whiskey. It's it, it and truly it's it's one of the whiskeys that I will always buy every time I see it with the Jack Daniels. I'll pass them up sometimes. I like to have a bottle on hand, and it is it is uh, interesting to kind of compare different um, offerings, the different single barrels from the Jack Daniels. But the Elijah Craig barrel proof is amazing it's great value it's old whiskey and i will always gravitate towards that and therefore that is my pick so connor is going with the elijah craig sean of bourbon junkies what do you think about what uh connor just said and which one of these should move on to the final four um i think he made a lot of good points honestly um i do feel I get a little bit more excited when I see uh, an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof on the shelf because I'm gonna go over and check out which batch is it, which batch it is. A um, lot of the C batches are continually some of my favorite. I will say some of the A and B batches fall really, really short. Consistency goes a long ways, but uh, I'm still gonna have to go with the Elijah Craig just because of how good I do believe some of them have been through the years. All right. So we have two votes, Alec, for Elijah Craig. Uh, will you upset the apple cart or will you push um, Elijah Craig through? The, the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proofs are great always, but they always have pretty much the same profile no matter when you pick it up. It, it's, it's a great bottle. I really do enjoy it. But as Connor and Sean said, you get a little differentiation when you go from A, B, or C batch throughout the year. Uh, everyone can kind of find something they like within those batches. I tend to lean toward the C batches as well. C919, C920, C923, um, all great batches. And I'm going to have to go Elijah Craig on that one. Boom. All right, Jordan. Uh, so it's she it's, gone. it's she's it's over. But what <laughs> would you have gone with had you gone with one? Yeah, I think uh, I like what Connor said. Pretty sums it up pretty well. Like um, the Jack Daniels is stinking good. It's surprisingly good. You're like, whoa, Jack Daniels is in the mix now. But you know when they're up against Elijah Craig, they're kind of out of their league here. Um, Elijah Craig is a lot more fun. To, like you know when the like the sort of like um, quarterly they're coming out. It's like. Just, Kind of uh, cause a little bit of buzz. Let's see what the next batch has got. Uh, and it's just a better bourbon. Like We're going to Elijah Craig on this one. Yeah, I think it's uh, fully unanimous. So Elijah Craig moves on to the final four. Uh, that brings us uh, back up to the uh, north. What is it? West regional? East. Uh, I think, think that's yeah, the only easy one. Uh, I'll start with Alec on this one. Alec, uh, bring that up, Jordan. Um, Hey, you got to give me a bit. All right, sorry. Uh, I'm mess with some stuff. going a little too quick for you. I know it's producing is hard, but uh... Scott, what yeah, would you I, have I, gone I... with on that one? You know, as much as we love the Jack Daniels, I think just the overall like differentiation that Elijah Craig has put out there, I think, you know, we were both in consensus that had it come to us that the Elijah Craig would have been our pick. Wow, so that was a uh, full sweep there, folks. Oh, you're yeah. All right, Alec, we've got a... Uh, We're a northeast, right? Yeah, we've got right. a bit of an upset uh, with the early... I, I, I like to call it the easy times. Uh, the easy times. <laughs> easy times. <laughs> the early times. You know, this... bo <laughs> bottled and bond versus the Knob Creek 12. Uh, this did take... Uh, early times took out uh, Rare Breed, which is a bit of a surprise to me. Uh, which one of these two, though, Alec, should move on to the final four? This is very difficult. Um, I know I went for Rare Breed on the first one over Early Times, but if I'm looking Jim Beam versus, well, I don't know who's producing it now, if it's Brown Foreman or Sazerac, I just know Sazerac owns it. Um, there is something super special about that Early Times bottle. Mm -hmm. I don't lean toward Jim Beam as much. Um, the profile isn't, isn't my favorite all the time, even though that Knob Creek 12 is a spectacular bottle. I'm going to have to go with the early times on this one. Gee, oh my Christmas. gosh. This is, this is crazy here. This is when we have our like uh old, 
uh, Lady of Fatima, you know, in the in the tournament, like you know, taking down North Carolina or something. Uh, this is a bit of an upset, Sean. Uh, early times versus Knob Creek Twelve. What do you think? This is a tough one. Um, like Alex said, because we have had early times blind, um, both new batches and old batches. And we couldn't even believe how good some of the new batches and the, the metal screw cap are. They taste phenomenal. Some of the old batches, we have a bottle that tastes 10 plus years old in the castle. And you're and like, people will drink it and they will never believe that it's early times. They think we put different whiskey in the bottle just to, you know, give it to them and get a reaction. Um, I, I mean, do I own cases of early times? Because when it switched, I didn't want to ever be without it. Yeah, yeah, I did. And for that reason, <laughs> it's always early times, forever and for always. But this we're is voting be on some the real new frosted, one, though, right? This is some like, Frosted Flakes bullshit, well, it's, it's and it's going to go through. <laughs> uh, Come, no, I, I do believe that the, that the new ones are good. Out, yeah. and that needs to be a new clip. Is yeah. this is some frosted flakes bullshit? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Uh, Connor, we've got two for early times. Are you going to yeah. upset the apple cart, or will the 15 seed move on to the final four? Mm. Well, um, I think when I started trying to analyze who would win in this round. Um, it was super close and it was super difficult. I think both of these whiskeys for me kind of fall in the same category. I, I love both of them, um, but they're, they're so similar and I enjoy them both so similarly that why would I not go for the one that's less than half the price? Mm. It's you can find it anywhere. It's the value is unbeatable. And for that reason, I'm going to have to go for the early times. Wow. Jordan. Wow. Crazy. Early times. Early or times. Or as I like to call it, easy times. Now, we should not be giving it uh, a pass because of its price. Like, we're, they're all in the, they all qualify. It's, so like, what, it's whatever, so it's I know, whatever. So we should be going by flavor at hey, this point. Sometimes you just like milk in a glass bottle because it's in a glass bottle. There's no rhyme or reason to that. <laughs> you have to go to it's Canada and get milk in a bag, though. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, Jordan. Wait, what? What would. <laughs> <laughs> What would you have gone with, Jordan, had uh, well, early times not... Uh... I mean, I like early times for the price, like it's, but it's not that good. Like I would take Old Forester 100 oh. over early times any day, and I would take Old Forester 100 over the old recipe early times any day. It's, it's okay. Like it's, it's cheap. It's good. How dare you? It's not that great. <laughs> old Forester 100 kills it every time. Uh, I would take Knob Creek over this like any day, easy. Wow! So I think I'm gonna agree with um, all the the other fellas. Jordan, you're the lone mm. wolf here. I'm gonna go early times in a big upset. The 15 seed wow. moves on to the final four for sure. Wow! Um, a twenty five dollar for a, a liter, Connor. Yeah, and you can't beat that. All right, what's the uh, what's the next uh, bracket, Jordan? If you're, next if you're, bracket. If you're ready, and I will oh, start. No. Obviously not. I will start this time with Connor. Um, Connor, uh, we have, oh God, I can tell already. This is, this is a rough, this is a rough round for me personally. <laughs> Noah's mill, uh, up against the Henry McKenna, not the Nathan McKinnon, which is by the way, the best hockey player in the world, but Connor Noah's mill, uh, Henry McKenna 10. What do you think? This is really tricky. Um, because the Henry McKenna 10, some of them are amazing and, it's uh, and the, and the Noah's Mill is a kind of a polarizing bourbon for a lot of people, but with that being said, um, I I think I have to go for the Noah's Mill on this one. For me, it has been a little bit more consistent. I think for the price point of the Henry McKenna Ten, where it sits now, and 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 that's not the only criteria I'm taking in here, Jordan. Don't worry, um, but I I think that's the tipping point. Is is mm. I would I would go for the Noah's Mill over the Henry McKenna Ten year. You gotta have a tipping point, Jordan. It's just a little. Some Henry McKenna tens I've had have been well, very. Well, it's gotta be a flavor tipping point. That's not, my point. Not necessarily. Been, no, not yes, necessarily. All these qualify. What if they're all equal? What if everything's equal? They're not. They, they are. They're not. According to him, <laughs> they never are. You, you can't tell him <laughs> he, he's unless wrong. They, unless they're the same bourbon, the flavor is not the same. You gotta go for one flavor I've, or the I've other. Had, I, there are times that I've had Henry McKenna ten, and I've explicitly stated this is not, this is not good. I've just not enjoyed the pour. At all, it was just unpleasant. 
kind of and for 50 or i guess for 100 proof sometimes it drinks really hot for me like it 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 just is an unpleasant pour at times sometimes it's amazing but for how inconsistent it is and the price point it's at i gotta go for the nose all right so uh sean of bourbon junkies uh, what do you think, uh, Noah's Mill, Henry McKenna, which one should move on to the final four? Um, well, one of these I had voted for previously uh, in the first match, and the other one I got outvoted. Um, <laughs> I, I honestly do just have to go with Henry McKenna. I mean, nothing wins Bourbon of the Year without being good, regardless of being a single barrel, and we do know there's some batch variation, but I think the risk versus reward here is fi- if you find one of those like very, very good, you know, crazy good single barrels, it, I, I mean, it'll always drink better for me than the Noah's Mill. So I'm just going to have to go McKenna. So sort of if I could, if I could sort of like digest what you just said is if you, if you get the right McKenna, it's, it's going to be far better than just the more, uh, standard Noah's Mill that's that's a little yep. bit more uh, see the yep. same that's the time. gambler in me yeah where Connor wants the the very even profile the 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 one that I know of when I pull it off the shelf it's going to be the exact same as the bottle that I had last time single barrel product ain't going to be the same so it, you know it's a little bit more gambly I guess but uh, I I, I want to try and find those winners all right Alec we have one for each one vote for each uh, what do you think. Um, I just have one thing to say. Uh, Noah who? I don't know what you guys are smoking up there in Colorado, or maybe maybe I do, but it doesn't matter. Even if I get an average bottle of Henry Kenna, I still enjoy it more than a Noah's Mill. There might be a few here or there that maybe might not be just quite as good, but day-to-day, Henry Kenna tenure is where I got to go. Interesting. All right, Jordan, we have uh, two votes for McKenna, one vote for Noah's Mill. It's not going to go our way, Alec. It comes down to you and I, and I don't even know if you and I agree yeah. on this one for sure. What What do you think? Um, we like both. The, whole studio um, the McKenna, I think, has the more complex finish. Noah's Mill has the punch that I really like. Um, the body. Uh, I mean, I think. I mean, uh, now I'm not going to actually take this into account, but McKenna is way overpriced. Um, but, I, you know, in terms of flavor, like I'm I'm generally going to lean towards the one that just gives me more like oomph to it. And I'm, I got, I'll go with the Noah's Mill on this. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and go with Jordan because uh, there to me, it's this is a toss up. I love both of these bourbons. And so I'll stick with Jordan to make it a full on tie. Uh, which means it goes to the studio audience. Scott, Matt, did you guys come up with some sort of consensus? All right. What did Jordan pick? Noah's Mill. Noah's Mill. Noah's Mill. Okay. So we are we're at a stalemate. Oh no! <laughs> so what are you? Doing? <laughs> because <laughs> I am oh, a McKenna okay, fan uh, all day. Every day, I love that bottle. Have for years. I, it's one of those that's always around at the house, and even out here at the like fifty-five dollar bottle price point, I still think it's a great bottle. Uh, and Matt is a Noah's Mill fan, which, like I said, I like Noah's Mill. There's nothing I don't fault it. But we gotta I am go just, to the audience. I'm I a, think I'm a McKenna guy, so I I'm think we have to go to the uh, we are viewing going audience. To have to go to wow. the audience on this one because we cannot come to a consensus on this. All right, love folks. to see you, gentlemen. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to the audience, which is better. Hold tight, folks. Uh, you guys are just going to get to break this tie for us. The stu- not, not the studio Facebook. audience, but the viewing audience is going to uh, get to vote on this. Jordan, I'll, I'll get mine going here. All right. Alex said poll- free bottles to whoever votes the right way. Uh, you heard, you heard it here first. Uh, Jordan, You're the one that owns a uh, How long do you want to give them? A, <laughs> like two minutes? Two minutes to vote. Uh, so everybody get your votes in and then... Um, I've got a good talking point. We'll try to right. wait. Yeah. Um, I saw a little Sean, bit earlier Sean, go vote. that uh, go vote. Joshua Rivas was asking everyone's thoughts about rapid aging experiments and mm. what we think about that. Um, so I'll kick this one off to Sean. What are your thoughts? Um, 
I don't think you can cheat Father Time uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, now, I do believe there are aids, things like um, doing chain oaking or wave stave barrels or spiral cut barrels. There are ways to increase your surface area on your barrel. You get more interaction you with your, your whiskey in there. So you can kind of fall asleep, you know, put it along a, a little bit, um, but you're not going to be able to take a two or three year bourbon, put something in it and make it taste like it's a nine year product. Um, what people want on a rapid aging is be able to basically take white dog and make a passable four year product in a week. And I just don't think that's ever going to happen. That is some of the fault I have with some of the Colorado whiskeys out here. As much as I want to support some of them, some of them are running that like 18 month age statement and mm. their force aging and, you know, that small barrel product. And as much as some of that can be decent, I just, I, I feel like you can still tell that yeah. you, there's uh, no cheating father time at all. Yeah. Cleveland is another brand. Um, they, they'll they oh, yeah. throw their whiskey yeah. into like a steel barrel and pressurize it with, uh, I think they're like broken staves or something like that in there. Yeah, so they they're would like, fill it, right? Basically, yeah, they're they're pressing it into your, your oak stave. Yeah. And I think I've that's tough that. taste. Awful. Yeah. But I, I, I think, hey, that's just my opinion. Yeah, with all these experiments, it seems like there's a flavor that you can extract in a shorter amount of time by doing these experimental stuff. But at the same time, it's a different, completely different profile than what you get from a mm -hmm. true aging in a barrel in a warehouse for a longer period of time. Um, I've had like the old Ingram. It was the river age. It's out of Kentucky. I was pretty impressed with that one for a three year, but then again, there's, I've had so many bad ones that are way more, you know, into the, um, there's like the, the Metallica one, uh, where they play Metallica music in the barrels, and it's good stuff, but I... Black it! Black it. But it just mm -hmm. is not the same. You Like Sean said, you can't cheat Father Time. You can get certain benefits, but not all of them. All right, boys. Yeah. Uh, all right, I got my votes in from YouTube. In. YouTube. Ready to get my heart broke. Facebook. Uh, it's pretty unanimous. Mm. Um, yeah. McKenna sweeps it, 83%. Oh, my gosh. I could have guessed that. Dang. Oh, it's studio audience. Thank you. <laughs> studio audience. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, there was not even, it's not even close. Like I figured it would be closer than that, but no, no, it's no not. Obvi been. obviously, obviously most of them don't live in Colorado. I guess yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. We are down to the final four. Uh, this is Oof. it boys. This is where the rubber meets the road. Um, Jordan, I don't know if you have that graphic ready, uh, no. the championship graphic ready. Oh, by the way, uh, while Jordan's getting that ready, I will say after we... And we're not at the final four yet either. No. Oh, we, we haven't we done have the bottom more? right yet. Oh, we have one more. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Let's do, we'll do that next. But <laughs> before we get to the that one, I will tell you that as soon as we announce a champion, we will also pick our winner for our Aganorsa Leaf Week uh, contest that we've been running all week long for a Ooh. original box, Connor, of the Reviver. An OG box <laughs> plus a leather cigar carrying case, which is beautiful. So all you had to do all week long was check into um, Aganor Salif Cigars on the Dojoverse.com, and you were entered. I've got uh, a ton, tons of qualified entries. We will pick a random winner uh, before we sign off tonight. Um, Jordan, tell me when you are Let's ready go. to go to that next bracket. Uh, Alec, I'm going to start with you on this next one. We've got, oh yeah, this is, uh, how could I forget this one? We've got Old Forester 1920 versus the Peerless in the Most Beautiful Bottle. Uh, Alec, Ruben, what do you think, who should move on to the final four between these two fantastic bourbons? I honestly think this is going to be a no-brainer across all of us. Um, although I do really enjoy Peerless, 1920 has a near and dear place in my heart. Honestly, for most of Old Forester products, they just make, Great products for a great price. There's no one coming out with bottles at $60 with that age, with that flavor profile. And 1920 is just freaking spectacular. I got to go 1920 on this one. All right, Sean, Bourbon Junkies, what do you think about what uh, Alex just said? Can you tell him that he's completely wrong and, and crazy, or do you agree? I would did, I would love nothing more than to do that to Alec, but unfortunately, <laughs> this is a windmill dunk, people's elbow, top turnbuckle, 1920, clear cut, 
winner. <laughs> wow. All right, uh, Connor, what do you think about the two so far? Yeah, uh, there's not much to be said here. Um, we lost the Woodford Reserve Double Oaked because Alex doesn't <laughs> like the taste of charred oak. And so, Do you yep. have a mouse in your pocket? What's this we? <laughs> I, I'm not seeing a we. <laughs> yeah, I voted for that, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, me and Sean. Same page. Sean, quiet now. The two of us are guys that know nothing. <laughs> but because he made it easy, the Peerless moved on. This is a slam dunk for the Old Forester 1920. Kind of on the, the rapid aging, the heat cycling in, in the Brown Foreman warehouses is amazing. And the 1920 is one of my favorite bourbons. It's an easy win. Ow. All right, Jordan. Uh, had you got to vote, uh, what would you have said? Yeah, uh... Uh, I mean, these guys have said it all. I think that uh, I could add that the, the Peerless is a bit too inconsistent for me, uh, and that's one of the reasons that I will add on to give the nod to the 1920. I I, I will I will add to this uh, that I would say if this was Old Forester 100, I would still voted the same way. Whoa. Um, I, I I am a I huge fan of what Old Foresters. Is doing it, you know what, uh, Sean? It's Old Forester is like one of the last bourbon companies that you can still walk into literally any liquor store, and they have almost the entire lineup. Their single mm-hmm. barrel stuff is incredible. That's a little harder to get. I realize that, but like, but but Sean, just talk about how the their whole lineup from start to finish is just absolutely incredible. It's really um, incredible. Yeah. Connor had just kind of touched on it, um, like how they heat cycle and how they consistently get out at like a, not a super aged product. Like a lot of their stuff on the shelf is like four to seven years old. Um, for them to put out a consistently good product that, I mean, all of us really do enjoy and keep on the shelf is insane. Um, the row, all the row series, um, great value for everything you're getting on there and even the classic and signature that... I, mean, I think those are in Michigan, like twenty-two and twenty-four dollars uh, a fifth. It's insane. Um, yeah, Old Forester is doing great stuff. All right, folks. I think now, Jordan, uh, we are down to our final four, are we not? Um, so yes, are. this is where it gets crazy. Uh, Connor <laughs> Slump of the Thirsty Oak. Uh, just Connor, before we before we, you know, crown a champion, which is is ever so close. Was the uh, was the double oak the the one that really sort of broke your heart a little bit in this? <laughs> Seems like it. It was, <laughs> and I hate that I, you know I knew it wasn't going to win. Hate it. I, I knew it wasn't. Gonna I win. Hate it. But I'd love to see it beat a peerless small batch. Yeah, for me that's it's an that's easy fair. decision. But now, I knew it would have lost. Now, Connor, uh, just uh, just for a little inside baseball here for folks, because now that we're almost over with the show. Uh, there was a few that we wanted to include, but they were just a little mm-hmm. obscure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but maybe folks want to hear about some of those picks. There was three of them that we kind of like pushed out at the very end mm-hmm. uh, that you that you'd said, "Hey, these are ones that you really should try." Uh, talk about the three. I, I think that that you maybe folks could look for and say, hey, "This mm-hmm. this might be a maybe next year when we're doing the show. If we're doing it next year, maybe it'll be different. They'll be a little bit more well known." But talk about those those ones. Yeah, well, I think there's something cool about finding something that is not kind of commonly known in, you know, something a little bit newer, lower production. It's not a legacy distiller that's putting out stuff that's as good, sometimes even better than legacy distillers at a great price. And so I suggested a couple different bottles to be on here. Um, But like Eric was saying, they're just not as well known as uh, pretty much everything we're talking about today. One of them was the Redwood Empire Pipe Dream. They're out of California. Um... That's a corn mash bill. It's a bourbon, and uh, it's it's a fantastic whiskey. It's a, and my favorite one is the Cast Strength, um, which is their. Uh, oh gosh, I forgot what the name of the series. Maybe Sean can can help me here. But uh, they have a, a Cast Strength offering I, of all their. I can't. I, I can see the labels that are like the brown ones. Right. I can't remember the the name of that series though. If I'm being honest. Yeah, but that was one of the ones that really impressed me, and and it's always. Uh, exciting when you find something that is in lower production that's relatively easy to find um, but then in low production it's you kind of have to keep an eye out a little bit you might have to scour the internet but it's not like people are flipping them they don't care about stuff like this so it's it's rewarding when you can find something like that so that was one of them that had in there another one was Detling um, which is a distillery out of Alabama and they've got a kind of a cool process they paint all their warehouses black and it gets like 160 degrees in those warehouses and so their stuff is all around four to six years old. Um, the one I proposed is a four-year. 
Um, and it's just a really unique profile. It's kind of, it's, it's divisive for a lot of people. Some people say it tastes like a, just like a wet t-shirt in a sense. Um, but <laughs> that could be great depending on where you're at. Exactly. But, um, for me, I, I and who's been, wearing the t-shirt. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Sean, your camera went out. Uh -oh. um, I'll, yeah. Let me try to fix that. Okay. <laughs> But I, but I love that bourbon. Um, for me, it, it, uh, it took me a little bit to, for it to grow on me. At mm -hmm. first, I wasn't too impressed. Um, and everyone in, in the, the bourbon groups has been talking about it nonstop. Um, I can't remember my third. Green, green, uh, green River. Green River. Right? Green River is amazing. And that was probably that's a great, the one that that's a great one. Heart the most. Um, and, they, um, and I don't know how recent this is. It feels recent to me, but they, they released a barrel-proof offering of their bourbon. It's around, I think I paid 60 bucks for it. Um, and it was amazing. It was on par with all the other high proof, you know, uh, legacy distiller bourbons. It's owned by Bardstown now. Uh, and, and I, I love everything Bardstown does. So that kind of had some plus points for me, but, um, yeah, th those were the ones I suggested. Uh, Sean, Alec, um, do you have anything to add to, uh, Connor's, uh, any ones that maybe we left off of these lists that, that, that people might be interested in? And maybe trying for the first time that you have in mind, or what do you think? Not necessarily anything that I have in mind, but from what Connor said, um, first off, were you talking about the Redwood Empire Haystack Needle, or was it a different one? No, the Haystack Needle is like their limited offering. I think it's a 14 okay. year. Um, this is more yeah, of a 14 year offering. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then uh, Sean has disappeared, but I'm pretty sure that he did a Green River <laughs> pick this week. And mm. so I think he would agree with you on the, on the Green River. You know, I when I bought I mean, that also bottle, we I posted it in the group and I'm like this is one of the most impressive bourbons I've bought lately. And um one of the guys saw my post and immediately went and bought three of them. And then he tasted it the next day and he's like you screwed me. This is not good. And then the next day uh the Bourbon Junkies released a video reviewing it and they <laughs> highly reviewed it and said it was you know kind of agreed with what I said in a sense and uh and I felt a little that bit more great. justified there. <laughs> and then Connor, I don't know if I don't know if you know this, but we actually worked with uh Barstown Bourbon Company for a while. We we made their uh distillery only cigar. So I am a big fan of Barstown, I'm a big fan of Green River, yeah. and I think they're putting out great products. Uh -huh. Um the other thing I was gonna add that was not on this list, but um, another fantastic bottle that's super easy to get is Old Forester 1910. Yeah, I yep. think that tastes tastes like s'mores in a bottle. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, the, that's one um, Alec we could have gone either way with yep. uh, 1910. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and and just a, I'm more of a 1920 fan myself. So yeah. but just I'm a glad side note on this, Alec. Today I was at Total Wine. I'm I'm hanging out in the Bourbon Isle at Total Wine, and I'm you know looking at the bourbons and whatnot. And this this guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, he's like. Uh, do you know anything about bourbon? And I was like, ah, a little bit. I mean, I'm not like an expert of any uh, stretch of the imagination. He's like, what's the best bourbon for around $50? <laughs> and I, I, part of me was like, should I tell him that tonight I'm doing a podcast? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, Little do you know. He, he's like, I'm a Scotch guy. You're going to have to wait. <laughs> but the, the, point of, the point of the story was I did point him to the uh, – the old Forester 1910 because it's yeah. a, a little less proof. Great bottle. I yeah. think he was looking for something maybe a little more approachable. He said right. smooth. And so yeah, yeah he did. He did, uh, smooth, yeah. guys. he did. Don't say smooth, guys. I.e. weak. He did. <laughs> so I. Smooth but, doesn't so, mean anything. Yeah, I did point Connor. him towards that uh, 1910, and it was kind of funny that it just so happened that I was doing the show tonight <laughs> when he asked me that question. But um, anyways, hey Sean, uh, so, are you back? Are uh, we got uh, you? Can hopefully. I have one more thing? Let me yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'll yeah, one more thing because I know Sean's not going to say it. Um, Evernor Spirits, very small oh, brand. Geez. Connor, you talked about you know you talked about getting to pick up a brand kind of early on before anyone really knows what it is. They're dropping their first blend on Monday. So what is it? How many barrels is it, Sean? Uh, it is an eight barrel blend that we have. Um, so, so how many bottles? How many bottles are dropping? Uh. On the Patreon, we're going to have um, 680 dropping. And then, and then if people are local, we have another 100 and whatever that math works out to at the, the distillery. So how do yeah. so folks makes it... get involved in, in getting some of that if they want to? Okay. Um, yeah. So if you can go into patreon.com backslash bourbon junkies. Um, that's where we do all of our drops. Uh, we do barrel picks out through the year. 
Um, and then everything is on there and then all of our distillery stuff too. So we'll be doing a lot more stuff this year. We've got some limiteds coming. We've got some more cool things. And then we're also doing things like, uh, single barrel picks with people like Alec and a couple other people in, inside of the, the bourbon YouTube. Um, so those are either going to be like dropped on our Patreon for, uh, if it's blends and bigger projects that we're doing or whoever is coming to do the pick will be on their Patreon. All right. Uh, Sean, um, while you were away, uh, we were talking about uh, maybe a couple uh, bourbons that we didn't include on this list that yeah. people might want to try. Did you have any uh, that came to mind that, uh, that, that, that are interesting that folks could maybe uh, pick out if they've already had all these ones and they want to try something different? Um, so, like, I know 1920 is on here, but I gravitate more towards the uh, Old Forester 1910. I love a double oak <laughs> product. It's really, really good. Um, it's $55. And we've already talked about the fact that it's on the shelf everywhere. I don't think you can go wrong with something like that. Okay. Would you take the Woodford Reserve double oak or the 1910? 1910. Interesting. So, Sean, you were gone, but I, I said 1910 before you got back. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. That's, that yeah. just good, goes to show. You know like, what? It really drives at home. That's a good bottle. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I, so, yeah. so just uh, uh, full disclosure, everybody for the longest time was like, you got to get the 1910. You got to get the 1910. I, I, me personally, I, I think 1920 kills it. I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Yeah. Uh, that's just my personal. It's just more your profile. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think when you're getting into whiskey, 1910 is the greatest lower proof but still complex whiskey you can get mm. there you go all right jordan are we down to the final four i think we are all right so let's bring those up bring up all right here we go we have the uh elijah craig barrel proof versus Oof. the henry mckenna then we have the early times versus the old forester 1920 which we've just been talking about Jeez. i'm gonna start with sean on this one sean of the bourbon uh -oh. junkies uh, bring that uh, up again for me, Jordan. Uh, we're going to start with the Elijah Craig versus the Henry McKenna. Sean, which of these two bourbons should move on to the championship round, my friend? That's tough. Um, I've, I've been really voting along the Henry McKenna a lot. Um, like I said, I think some of those are fantastic. But unfortunately, batches like C920 exist for Elijah Craig single or barrel proof. That that bottle itself I think was top 3 of the year for us. Um there the C batches are consistently just right up my alley. They they're proofed always well. They have a great age statement on them. They're pretty easy to find for 70 to 80 normally around us. Um it, it's got to be Elijah Craig barrel proof, man. Ooh, Elijah Craig, according to Sean, moves on to the championship round. Alec, do you disagree with your friend Sean, or do you concur? I got I, I to gotta say this is great because they're coming from the same distillery, so um, oh. that kind of makes it a little bit more fun. But in terms of where I lie, in terms like what I drink with proof and what I find to be consistently better the majority of the time, I have to lean toward... Elijah Craig. It's just more of a special occasion bottle to me. Um, even though they can be hard to find at times, they are still readily available if you look kind of hard enough, if you hit more than one store. And I think that Elijah Craig takes it. Uh, now, I would normally go to Connor, but I feel like I should go to Jordan on this one um, uh, to make it interesting. Uh. Um, Jordan, do you concur with Alec well, and Sean, or yeah. do you <laughs> say, or, or do I mean, you... I, I, like, Henry, Henry McKenna is great. I've been drinking it since, like, I got into bourbon since 2011 or so. Drinking it since it's I was great. a newborn. It's, yes, I was a little pup. <laughs> uh, you know, it's great, but it's way out of its league at this point. Like, it shouldn't have made it this far. Like, Elijah Craig just absolutely destroys really? it. Really? Take it any day of the week over Henry McKenna. I disagree. Like I feel like uh, some of the oh. barrel, some of the maybe I'm getting the wrong batches or something. And even even the worst batch of Elijah Craig no, I've no, ever made no, would be Henry McKenna. No, I disagree. I would go. I would go McKenna. But so Jordan and I here Where's we go. C nine two three three. That'll change your mind. 
That'll put mm, there it is right there. Oh, yeah. How do we know what it is? How do we know? Stupid guy. How do you know what batch it is? Yeah. Well, it tells you right on the front. Look at the bottom it's label. It's on the label. <laughs> I, my, I can't see, Connor. <laughs> so I, if says, you can't see, how do you know? Nine, two, three, right? Oh, wait, 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 Get your glasses. Hold get on, your glasses, on. old man. Oh, wait, wait. wait, wait there we go. Oh, yeah. This there is one of those things where before Henry McKenna yeah. won the crazy award, we wouldn't even be having this discussion. Like, the, nobody uh, cared about I mean, Henry McKenna. I mean, all right. That is the the Fred Minnick uh, experience in Bourbon, though. You get you get named number one on his list. Your shit goes crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, That's Connor. Right. I guess there's still a little bit up in the air since is me it? and Jordan disagreed. Well, uh, I've been so trying. Me and Jordan's to... votes kind of got thrown out. <laughs> uh, what would you What would you say? I and mean, this feels like a, a great day for me. I've been trying to kill this <laughs> Henry McKenna ten for like. <laughs> every round now and the Elijah Craig has been a slam dunk so when I saw this these guys against each other I'm like great this is going to go where I wanted to um, Elijah Craig all day alright well I guess Elijah Craig uh, moves Jiminy on Christmas. to the championship <laughs> uh, Connor I'll start with you on this uh, next round uh, Jordan bring up that uh, bracket we have the mm. oh the upset uh, the early times, which was uh-huh. a 15 seed, $25 for a leader going up against the old Forester 1920. Connor of the Thirsty Oak, mm-hmm. you're our first voter. What do you think? I think the early times is minutes match here. Mm-hmm. And um, the 1920 is is always something I'm going to reach for over in early times. For the other ones, it was too close where the price point just was the tipping point for me. But at this point, it's one of my favorite bourbons against a good value bourbon. I'm going to reach for 1920 any day of the week. Alec, what do you think? I want to uh, see, I want to see what Sean said. Let Sean go. All right, we'll go to, we'll go to Sean next. Uh, Sean, uh, what do you think between the two? I know you're a big early times guy. Uh, you know, does, it, does it knock down the 1920 or, or no? It is my love. <laughs> it will always be my love. Uh, unfortunately, um, oh, okay. I mean, Brown Foreman owned it and then sold it off. So that I don't know. Mm. It, so don't maybe that, that tells you some things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still love it, but 1920 is gonna be doing 1920 things, and uh, that that's gonna be so hard to beat. Almost across the board for me, so I got to go 1920. All right, we have two votes for 1920. Alec, yeah, yeah, this is this is. I was gonna if if Sean was willing to say early times, I may have backed him up on it, but I knew the. You know what? I like changing my vote. No way! No, I like that. I like that. He was he was thinking it through. Like yeah. Yeah. Um, if he had the balls to say early times, I may have backed him up on it. Um. Yeah, 1920 all day. Easy. Easy vote there. Yeah, I mean, Jordan, I, I, it's 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 already a, it's already said and done. Well, I already but, said my early times hate, so yeah. I don't hate it, but you know like it's not what it's cracked up to be, guys. Like it, yeah, there's no way sir. There's, there's no way it can it can beat up uh it can beat out the 1920, right? I mean, yeah. I think it's pretty much you know, we're down <laughs> we're down to two. God. We're down to two. We um, were literally at a cigar bar last night, and I was scrolling through the list, and they had early times bottle and bond, and it was like nine bucks a pour. And I go, "Yep, that's going to be it for me." Well, yeah, we would Jake's? all do that. That doesn't mean <laughs> yeah. it's going to be nine twenty. <laughs> it was a Jake. We, we, I know. I knew you were right, Jake. Yeah. You had to be. Uh, before before we pick our champion, uh, and we're down. This is it, or we're down to the two. Um, Alec, uh, tell folks how you drink your bourbon. What do you, what, what's your ritual? How do you drink it? Do you retrohale it through your, do you sniff it? You... <laughs> yeah, I drink it and then hands, spit it out my, through my nose generally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, honestly, um, I analyze my whiskey shelf for about 20 minutes, mm, figure like out a, a few, a, yeah, figure out a few bottles I want to grab for the night, uh, pr- usually end up with two or three. Um, grab a, grab a glass, head outside into the backyard, light up a cigar. Well, also I have to analyze the cigars for about, you know, another 20 minutes. So we're already 40 minutes in and nothing has happened yet. <laughs> um, cut my cigar, anything but a, but a V cut, fuck a V cut. Mm, thank um, you. Best cut yep. there is. 
Uh, oh, grab terrible. a bag. He cut sucks. <laughs> yeah. No, wait. Uh, let's, well, let's, these let's, are all the cigar guys versus the. Let's be honest. Guy. The, a V cut is is a step <laughs> above a punch. Yes. Can we can we agree on that? No. Very much so. What? Um, oh wow. Yeah, I would. I'd rather. Alec, I don't even know my, you right now. I'd rather huh. use my nails. I'd rather use a straight cut. I'd rather use a punch. Anything over a fucking V cut. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> It doesn't matter. The I don't care. <laughs> yeah, this is why I V cut everything and send it to him. <laughs> I will. I will bite. I will bite it. I don't. I don't care what I need it's to like, do. I'll rip it in half. Uh, over a V cut. <laughs> yeah. Over a V cut. Um, uh, and, and then what do you do? You're, how do you pick the final bourbon and how do you drink it? Is it neat? Is it a couple drops of water? You, you dare don't throw ice really, in it. All right. You're off the show. Jordan, get ready. Get the button ready. He's ready. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I would say 95 percent of the time it's neat. If it's Hot as fucking Florida. I am throwing some ice in there. <gasps> Blast <for me. laughs> At this time, we would like to thank Al Rubin yeah. for joining us on Cigar Dojo, and we would wish him the best of luck with his Never whiskey smoke release. Alone. He's on the show. He's on the show. Woo-hoo. All right. Uh, Sean, uh, how do you drink your bourbon? What's How would you recommend people get the most out of their bourbon, Sean? Uh... I mean, honestly, I, I'm for however you want to drink it. I, like, I don't care, honestly, that if you do it on ice. ice. <laughs> if, <laughs> yeah. At this time, we would like to thank Sean <laughs> for joining us tonight. And we wish him the best of luck with his bourbon release. Hot Hot show. <laughs> and Alec is off the show, too. Here we go. <laughs> Woo! Now, this no, is the real show. Let, let Sean finish. Let Sean finish. <laughs> No, I, I like, I don't care. I, everything that, um, anything that moves bourbon, it's good for, you know, yeah. good for my business. Yeah. So however you want to enjoy it, you enjoy it. Um, mostly when I'm doing stuff like it's whatever I can get in arm's reach. So the, the back half does not get drank as much because mm, I don't okay. roll back there to get it. I just grab something. Mm. Um, don't, I don't really discriminate. I've got a bunch of different stuff around me. Just because I like to change it up a lot. I always, I always keep doing something new and trying different things. Yeah, you know, Sean, that's a good point because that's sort of how I am with uh, cigars is I have a hard time um, smoking like the same cigar. There's a few that are in my rotation, obviously, that I, I really love. But for me, it's hard to have the same one often. I like to just continually rotate, you know, keep trying different things. That's, mm-hmm. Sounds like that's how you are with your, your bourbon collection. 100%. Um, I don't really worry about too much of, oh, I'm saving that or anything like that. It's just kind of like everything I have except for like a couple bottles are open. And, and uh, I have people come over all the time and they're like, what what can't I have? And I'm like, if it's open, just drink it. Like this is meant to be shared. This is meant to be enjoyed. So just open it and drink it up. Like all the good stuff is in the closet anyway and you can't see it. So. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it, no, it's not. I was over there. <laughs> Oh, I was oh, over there. Oh, that's, so that's top good. shelf arms right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now folks, I was over there a month ago, and I drank whatever I wanted. So if you are, right. if you're listening on podcast, oh, yeah. uh, Sean just pulled out a bottle of uh, William Larue Weller, uh, which is Jordan. Wouldn't you say that's the best in, for in, me? In, yeah, personally, I agree. Uh, all right, uh, Connor. Before we go on to choose our champion, uh, how would you recommend folks drink their bourbon? How do you get the best out of a glass of bourbon? Well, I mean, I'm if I will just do a little tiny point here. If you have been drinking bourbon and you know that you like it on ice, keep doing you. If you put it in a cocktail, whatever. I mean, I'm a purist. I don't like doing it. I mean, I love a good bourbon cocktail, but if it's a good bourbon, I really want to experience. I'm going to drink and eat. If someone's new to bourbon and they want how do I experience this to the best of my ability? And they're interested in that. I'm always going to advise someone to drink it neat. Um, for some people, it's too overpowering. I say take smaller sips and kind of slosh. He pulls out his out, blends. Dilute it with your, yeah, drink the blends. <laughs> it's already diluted for you. And uh, <laughs> um, and and drink it. I mean, I think I'm a, I love drinking out of a Glen. I think you guys are all, all the dojo guys are rocks glasses. They yeah. prefer the feel of it in their hand. For me, I think the experience is enhanced in a Glen. I think the aromas, yeah. you you get a lot more of that complexity of a bourbon when I'm drinking out of a Glen. And I like to do in small amounts. Mm. So when I look at my shelf and I'm going to start drinking, I typically will drink like five to ten different bourbons in one night, but I'm doing like a quarter ounce of each. I love the 
the exploration of kind of of going from one bourbon to another and comparing the differences between them. And so I'm not the type of guy to like grab a bottle and sit down for the night. I'm always kind of changing what I'm drinking. Yeah, I, I sort of agree with Connor on this one. Uh, I'm, not, I'm certainly no bourbon expert, but I say, guys, this is the, the nectar of the gods. And so what you do is you pour it neat, but you take the smallest sip and let the bourbon do the work. Like, I think sometimes folks that don't like bourbon, Jordan, yep. is because they're taking, like, larger sips and they don't realize they're that Drinking you, at the pace that you would drink, like, regular Jack Daniels. Just right? just drink the tiny, get the tiniest <laughs> sip and then let, no. <laughs> and let the bourbon do the work, man. Just let it just explode into your mouth. It is the greatest drink uh, on the face of the earth. Uh, it beats scotch. It beats Irish whiskey. It beats, it beats anything because... After all, we're Americans for crying out loud. We drink yeah. bourbon. By yeah, the way, like show that a fireball thing that you got. What oh, is yeah. that? Just real quick. What is, what is this thing? <laughs> what is this thing? This is right here. It's a beautiful bottle. Yeah, this it is beautiful. It looks this like the Four fireball. Roses <laughs> Japanese bottle. No! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It's a, now, this, uh, is super some rare, this is rare, right? This is rare. There's 1,200 bottles of this, <laughs> supposedly. That? However, it just got super easy to find. Like um, they released, it, I want to say, like six months ago. And That's it because was... nobody over the age of twenty-five <laughs> drinks that. Hey, we all had our past. Yeah, how old are you? I am uh, twenty-three. Yeah. How much? How much you spent on that thing? Fitting twenty-five bucks. Okay. All right. That's right. great price. Yeah. All right. Does that have an actual cork in it? It does. Yeah. It looks Holy like it. smokes! <laughs> I, oh, I, I do want to right say now, a little ASMR on the cork pop if we wanted to. <laughs> Yes, yeah, let's 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 do it right now. Let's uh, let's just see what this tastes like. Just I just yeah. got to see what this tastes. I'm just gonna, gonna ruin our palate for the rest of the night. Oh right. yeah, that's right. Don't let's do just, it. Don't do it. Don't just do before it. we do the championship, Wait, let's just maybe see what we happens. should like try to get some super chats or something first. All right, here we go. Kidding. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> uh, super chat. Oh. I'm. I feel so like intrigued. we need to go get shot glasses for this. All right. So oh, I, you meant, we all missed it. That was weak. No, was I got weak. I got the ASMR on that. Ooh, it's like I, that was a weak pop. All right, here we go. Ooh, it smells like cinnamon. I'm gonna weak stream, bro. <sighs> all right. All right. So Jordan. I'm gonna give it my first impression. Jordan. 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 Uh, I already have whiskey in my glass. I'm yeah, gonna... Audience, get over here. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Get over here. Can you oh, wow. drink fireball without just sh like a, in a shot glass or shooting it? It's uh, like, it's very, not a sip in whiskey. Very, very sweet. Is it cinnamony? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very, very cinnamony. <laughs> oh, but you know, so good. But it's, it, you know what? It's not hot. Mm. What's the proof? It's not hot. It's sixty-six proof. It's not hot. Sixty-six proof. It sort of tastes like so. Um, it's basically a liqueur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It tastes like a liqueur. You're I right. I hate it. Um, it's, it's actually pretty good. I think. All right. Uh, in this final round, uh, if I can I even like talk, if I can even talk anymore. Uh, why um, do we have this guy on the show? In this final, <laughs> in, now, now we've officially made fun of everybody, so yes. that's good. Um, all right. In this final round, I'm going to let Sean make his case first. I'm going to let Sean, of the Bourbon Junkie, Ooh, Sean Paisley, make his hard. case first. We are down to just two bourbons. We have the number one seed. Elijah Craig, Barrel Proof. And what was the, uh, oh, the number three seed versus uh, Old Forester 1920. Sean, why should one of these be the champion? Which one, Sorry. which one, in your opinion, is the champ? The best bourbon that you can get at your local liquor store, relatively easy for around 70 ish <laughs> or less. I don't know. Um,. <clears throat> This is tough. This is uh, left hand, right hand stuff right here. Like, which child do you like the I like most? This already, um, man. Yeah, I I, I think for the time. the same reason <laughs> I've been time. going for it. Oh no no no! no. <laughs> I think for the same reason that I've been putting one of these ahead. One of them also had a cakewalk to the finals here. Let's just throw that out there. Nineteen twenty, mm. way easier True. lineup. Um. Unfortunately, I do believe the highs of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof outweigh the oh, wow. availability and consistency of 1920 for me. Um, there's just something special about getting the batch variations of the ECBPs. And like I said, I don't even love all of them, but the ones that you do love, it's it 
that's something you go back and you buy a few more of just to have, and you can pull them out and be like, oh, man, I got, I got this, you know, like I said, C920, one of my favorites that came out. You go, dude, I got this, and people look at it a little bit different than just pulling out a 1920. So I think the winner for me is going to be ECBP. Oh, wow. Alec, um, your buddy Sean has gone with the Elijah Craig uh, against the Old Forester 1920. Do you, A, concur that that should be the championship uh, winning bourbon, or do you disagree? You know, I'm going to talk myself through this one because <laughs> I don't Good, know. yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, 1920 is consistent. It's a great bottle. Every time you pick it up, you're going to enjoy it. Easy. Elijah Craig, some of them I love. Some of them aren't for me. Uh, as Sean said, uh, C920, when it came out, I bought eight bottles of it because I knew that that was going to be one of my favorite batches of Elijah Craig of all time. And, and it is. I still, it's a monster. Yeah, still drinking, still drinking through it. Um, I'm a man that likes a little bit of a chase. You can ask my wife. Um, <laughs> hey. that, that's I don't like even know what years. that means. Did you used to like, like admit it. to stalking or? It gets me excited. No, three, three, <laughs> three years of chasing. Three years of chasing. Um, Sounds like you're a slow runner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He for sure she is. Knows. She, she, she's just a fast runner. Um, I, I think for me, I there's I, there's too many jokes there, Alec. I'm sorry. It's like low hanging fruit too. Um, uh, how but much you know, have yeah. we had at this point? I mean, I mean, this that's the fireball great. talking way, way too much. It's I've, been, I've, talking. Been for, I've been low hanging. I've been low hanging for years. Um, low to the left. Um, stop uh, it! Stop, stop it! Stop it! Stop. <laughs> All right, this show has gone off the rails. All right, you continue. <laughs> I think for me, the, cha the, the chase of finding the better bottle is mm. a little bit more important, and it's a more special bottle, so I'm going to go with Elijah Craig. Ooh, we have two votes. Oh, Elijah dear. Craig, before I go to Connor, Connor, I think I'm going to end with you. That's fine. Um, Jordan, we have two votes <laughs> for the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Um... What do you Ugh. think about what Sean oh. and Alec have said, and what would you say is the champ between these two? What a difficult decision. Mm. Yeah, it's rough. Agreed. Um, By the way, it should, be, it should be noted. It should be noted if you're watching along and you're sort of maybe like starting off getting into bourbon. It, you cannot go wrong with either one of them. Oh, these. no, yeah. Like this, Agreed. The, the, this is great stuff here. This whole list. Yeah. Both fantastic bourbons people um I, I like what sean was saying like i'm in that same kind of ballpark like which one if i if i have these i i would be more likely to put the elijah craig up on my bourbon shelf and i wouldn't put the 1920 on the bourbon shelf like i would i would buy it and i would drink it and it's good i love it uh but i'm not gonna put it on the shelf or anything like that uh <laughs> that's I'm, I'm going with elijah craig it's got the mm. it's got the oomph that i i love that's why i like bourbon i like to punch me in the face with the flavor that's that's what i'm in this whole thing for so i'm going to Elijah craig uh i'm gonna disagree with jordan I'm going with the 1920. I'm a old Forester fan. I, I like I said, if 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 you're watching the show and you only have twenty seven dollars, get Old Forester one hundred. It's not even that far off from the nineteen twenty. It is absolutely amazing bourbon. I'm gonna go with the nineteen twenty. I realize me and Jordan have a split vote. So it kind of comes down to Connor. Connor, uh, can you break this? Ty, or do we go to the studio audience? This one is tough uh, because within this bracket, I have been gravitating a little bit more towards the consistency than the gamble between different releases. Um, but I think what separates the Elijah Craig within its batches comparatively to the Henry McKenna, the single barrel releases that I haven't been too fond of, is you, there is a consistency within their batches. It is relatively predictable. And once that batch comes out, if you really want, you can read all the reviews and kind of gauge if that's your profile before making the decision on if you want to buy it. There's also a sense of collectability and excitement around it because in a sense, it's a time capsule 
of like um, they were Sean and uh, Alec were saying they they're holding on to that C920 because it was one of the best batches they've ever done. Um, I don't know anyone who's holding onto a four year old old Forester 1920 because it's it's such a unique release. Mm. Um, and and I love 1920, but some of the batches of the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof that I've had are, are top five of my all time. And if if just the fact that something that's seventy dollars it's relatively easy to find when those batches come out if you go hit a couple stores you're gonna find it if you you know if, if your timing is relatively uh correct there and so for that I'm, i i have to go with the elijah craig there we go that is the champion elijah craig barrel proof takes it jordan uh what do you think about that let's show the there there it is that's the final bracket um Alec, uh, real quick, when you look at that bracket, is there anything that uh, disappoints you that uh, maybe should have gone further or something that maybe went a little too far? Uh, What do you think of that bracket? How do you you feel about it? you feel good about that bracket? Honestly, I think this is the best bracket that you guys have done thus far. It is is right. It is on point. Um, I saw some of the – you showed some of the past ones. Uh, The candy bars was fucked up. Uh, the cereal <laughs> definitely had some dis- like some disappointments, but I gotta say, if majority of people looked at this, the only issue they they would have is rare breed versus mm-hmm. early times. Right. Everything else, I know Connor but is upset they? about the Woodford. I don't know. I, I was a little upset about the the rare breed. I'm a big rare breed fan, but um, I would say the, maybe the only two upsets were. Early time rare, early time rare breed, and the Woodford Peerless. But otherwise, this was always going to end up at Elijah Craig. Yeah, uh, Sean, uh, thoughts? Do you agree with Alec on that? Uh, any upsets or any ones that went a little too far that uh, maybe shouldn't have? Um, no, honestly, I think it came down to the two when I looked at the bracket. Um, like those, are the two in my mind that it would have come down to for me personally. So I'm happy like the voting went that way. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's hard when you have something that is just a, um, like a normal release for something that is meant to be batched and be different and be more excitable. Um, mm, cause like, right. that's what we're about in, in the world of bourbon is give me something different from the one that's before. Yes. Does it fit in a profile? Cool. But is it that much better than the one from either last year or four months ago? Anything like that? Um, I think that ECBP was a clear cut winner for me, um, before we started to. All right, Connor, uh, what do you think? Uh, any disagreements on what they said? I totally agree actually with what both of them said. Um, th- those were the, the 1920 and the ECBP. Those were the two dominant. I got to uh, say, Connor, you told me in the, in our little personal text thread, you said I, I, Elijah I Craig is going to win this. I did. It yeah. was it was a, a clear cut victory from the start. I think, given the panel we had, I knew everyone here has a good grasp on bourbon and, and appreciates what ECBP has to offer. I think maybe for a different crowd, it wouldn't have ended up the same. But we're all enthusiasts. We're all deep into this hobby, and we love trying out different expressions that are consistently amazing. And that's what ECBP is. All right, I have one last question for all three of you guys uh, before we end the show tonight, uh, Connor. Right now. If you just scraped away any criteria that we've had on this show tonight, price, availability, any any possible criteria, what is the best bourbon you could get your hands on right now? What is your favorite bourbon right now? George C. Stagg. George C. Stagg is r- just like hits my profile, nail on the head. It's just a cherry pie to me. It's sweet. It's a flavor bomb. It's everything I want in a bourbon. You put that next to any other form of whiskey and it will stand out. You can pair it with a steak. You can pair it with a chocolate dessert. It's, you know, you cannot out intensify a George T. Stag, and that is what yes, I love. Can. Uh Jordan, yes, can. Uh, before I go to Alec and Sean, what is your ultimate favorite bourbon right now? If you could have anything you wanted to, you could pour anything you wanted to right now, what would you pour? I'd pour William LaRue Willer BTAC, baby. Why? Uh, it's it's got this chocolate chip cookie dough vibe, and it's got the intensity that I need. It's a weeder, so it's still got this uh, 
sort of a soft kind of finish to it that I like. Um, it's it's in the stag ballpark, but it's got more of the flavor that I'm looking for. Alec, what would you pick right now if you could have any bourbon in the world and you could just pour it right now? What would you do? If you're if we're removing vintage from this, which I think we should, um, yeah. Yeah. I love George C. Stag. I love WLW. I'm going to go from the things that I've had, King of, King of Kentucky. I think it beats mm. out George C. Stag. Um, w, WLW is, is a different profile, but still those two – Pretty close, but I'm going to go King of Kentucky. Very good. Sean, uh, if you could pour any bourbon right now and Ooh. drink it, your favorite bourbon right now as we speak. I realize this changes because like, mm-hmm. as far as cigars go, it's the same sort of, you know, sometimes I'm a, an Opus X kind of guy. Sometimes there's, you know, another cigar that I like even better, but it changes. But right now, Sean, if you could pour any bourbon, what would you pour? Um... Man, well, I mean, so I already pulled this down earlier. The WLW, <laughs> I think, is a yeah. very strong candidate for me. Um, Buffalo Trace knows what they're doing with the BTAC lineup, honestly. Um, but Michter's 25, I think there's something special about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've only got to try it like once. And that was an easy one that I, I tasted. I went, that's top three bourbon I've ever had in my life. Um, so that, that would be it for me. Absolutely. Fan. I, I guess I'm a nerd. I, I know this is, uh, this is probably a, uh, you know, maybe it's like a newbie sort of thing to say, but I would say Pappy 15, like for me, Pappy 15 is Solid. just always just the right amount of finish for me. Like the finish is so long. I just love, uh, Pappy 15. I, I, I don't know. That's my, that's my pick. All right, boys. Um, that's it for the show. It was an amazing show. Uh, let's pick a winner. And then at the end of the show, I'll let uh, Alec uh, talk about what's going on with Alec Brady real quick. And uh, Sean, what's going on with Bourbon Junkies. Jordan, we have a, an amount here of uh, – let me, let me get the amount of entries. Um, while, while I'm doing this, you can get prepare. <laughs> so, that takes a little bit longer than this. Uh, uh, we have <laughs> – uh, hold, so, oh, I, hold on, hold on. Slow down, slow We're down. down. You got whoa, whoa, this. Whoa, whoa. Slow down. There, slow down. Uh, there was, um, there was eighty-eight qualified entries that I picked out over the week for the Agonorsa Leaf Week contest, and you will win. Whoever wins this will win a original box, Connor, of the Reviver. That was our first two thousand eighteen Reviver. Absolutely incredible cigar, and they're obviously they're super rare. They sold out almost instantly, and it's been how many years? 2018, six years. So um, you can't get this box anymore. Terrence was uh, nice enough to provide this prize for us. There's 88 entries. You'll also get Connor a really cool leather carrying case that says Agonorsa Leaf on top of it. Super cool. So whoever wins this um, is going to be one happy camper. Jordan, you tell me uh, when you are ready. We have 88 entries. All right. All right, here we go. Wait, let's find the drum roll. I'm a sucker for a good accessory. (laughs) Here we go. 59. All right, start counting. 59 goes to John Jensen. John Jensen, you are the winner. Congratulations, John Jensen. You have won yourself a box of the original Reviver. Dang, that's a good box. That is an incredible box, by the way. It's there's there's no getting around that, Jordan. By the way, it's all timer. Uh, it's it's the unicorn of unicorns as far as uh some of our dojo releases yeah. go. Like uh, that was one of the ones that people fight for these days, arm wrestle for, if they right. will. Alec, uh, what is going on with Alec Bradley? Uh, what can folks uh, look forward to in the next year or so? I know you talked about the um, the bourbon release. Anything else going on with Alec Bradley these days? What's what's up? Yeah, so we talked about the Uncut Series tonight. Uh, we have this one releasing uh, April 22nd at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we have two more releasing throughout the year. We also have two or three more awesome cigar releases uh, coming throughout the year. Um, cool collaborations such as Uridoshi, 
Stay Uro tuned. Doji. Stuff By the way, out. Alec, uh, just Uro time Doji. out. Time out. Uh, Uro Doshi sold out in near record time. What was it, Jordan? Do you do you remember right off the top of your head? It, it was fast. Uh, it was like it was like it was one of the fastest it was like selling an hour or so. Like, it was right? one of the fastest yeah. selling um, dojo releases of all time, Alec. That was incredible. The Leapier cigar. We have to we have to prepare for four years from now for for another one. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, uh, oh, I did me. get I an opportunity. I, I was gonna say uh, I just got an opportunity to have one of those the other day. They're really good. You did okay, kid. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so so there's a lot going I hate on with this Alec guy Bradley. So much. <laughs> uh, but you got to get your so you, much. Alec. You got to keep your eyes peeled for this uncut series that's going to be announced, right? Because uh, this is a really yeah. really good. Uh, bourbon, the 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 fine and rare that was absolutely delicious. Connor could awesome. attest. Fantastic, uh, Sean. What is going on with Bourbon Junkies? Bring us up to date. How do people follow you guys? How do people get? A, this is, by the way, one of the absolute coolest um, uh, YouTube and Facebook groups that you can be a part of if you're into bourbon. Follow the Bourbon Junkies on Facebook. Follow, subscribe to their YouTube channel. Great stuff. What's going on this year with Bourbon Junkies? Oh, so many things. Um, well. Mostly for us, um, we're, we have scheduled content. We drop every uh, Monday and Thursday. Um, we attempted to do a podcast for a while, and then life kind of got in the way of that one. Um, <laughs> but then we live stream every Tuesday night on, on our uh, YouTube and come hang out with us. It's pretty much just this, but with more whiskey. It's us just hanging out, uh, talking to the community, having a good time. And then we, we have Ever North Spirits, uh, which is our distillery. We are an NDP Um we have a couple of different mash bills that we contract to still, and we just have fun going in and blending up some whiskey and doing some cool projects and genuinely enjoying the thing that, uh, you know, really changed our life uh, like five years ago or so. So, yeah, that's us. All right. Fantastic. Uh, Connor, what's going on Thirsty Oak? You got some stuff dropping? Yeah, we've got some stuff coming soon. Uh, you know, if you can find me on YouTube under the Thirsty Oak, uh, not putting out content as often uh, as I used to. Life well, got in the way. Life got in the way. Uh, you, 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 like I, I soon, don't want to say. Soon I, to be dad. Yeah, right. I didn't want to say. I didn't, <laughs> so, I didn't well, want congratulations. To throw that out there. Congratulations. I didn't want to throw that out there because I I didn't want to like be like oh like maybe like yeah. some relatives don't know or something. Yeah, soon to be dad. Um, and <laughs> Grandma. <so> <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh, he's got a lot of sperm. Oh, just, you guys I, should see the there's, sperm. There's so see. much sperm. He's got it, it on a, like a, a videotape that he sends yeah. to no, everybody. It's crazy. No. Everyone here is no. sperm. <laughs> no. Under a microscope. We, it was a, a, good, it was a, a good show. A very... It was a good show. <laughs> was it? We did well and then this. Listen, it wasn't on like a tissue. It was <laughs> under a microscope. I wanna... And this microscope had to get real close. Yeah, it, was, yeah. Like, it was incredible. Yeah, you could see all them. So so follow Thirsty Oak on YouTube. Uh, appreciate you, Connor. Uh, by the way, I appreciate you helping me with this uh, bracket because I wouldn't have known where to go. Hey, guys, Wednesday, as Flavor Odyssey returns, uh, we will be picking the best pairing with a Room 101 brand cigar. And I know you, Alec, are good buddies with Matt Booth. You guys are now under the same uh, umbrella. Yes, we so we will be doing, Alec, a, a Room 101 this Wednesday. That's great. On Flavor Odyssey, what's your favorite Room 101, Alec? I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, man. Maybe Johnny Tobacco Knot. Oh, Ooh. it's so good, right? The oh, new one is so yeah. good. Best answer. I know. Yeah, that's a I great know. cigar, yeah. I love Absolutely. a farce, but uh, Johnny Tobacco Knot really does it for me. So. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be going noodles, Jordan. I'm gonna be going noodles on that. Noodles. Uh, but I gotta I gotta find a good drink pairing. So that's what we'll be doing uh, Wednesday on Flavor Odyssey. Uh, a week from tonight on Smoke Night Live, guess who we have? Sammy Phillips of La Polina. He's one of the funniest, most engaging characters in the entire cigar industry. Obviously, Alec, you know him as well. Best Sammy Eric Espinosa very well. impersonation. Sam who nobody award. does nobody does an Eric Espinosa like Sammy Phillips, right, Alec? No, it's very true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's spot, it's spot on. It's spot on. All right, folks. Uh, I want to thank on. uh, Alec uh, Rubin for being with us tonight. I want to thank Sean Paisley for being with us tonight. And of course, Connor, thank you for being with us tonight. Guys, get on the Dojo app right now. Dojoverse.com. Check in your favorite cigars. Do some uh, what you're drinking. I want to see what you're drinking. If you got some bourbon going and a little hashtag now playing. Get a little, uh, maybe you got a little ska going. Maybe you got some ketchup. 
That was one of your favorite. That was one of your favorite songs, Connor. Catch up. And so, no. so all night long, we'll be hanging out on Dojaverse.com, uh, having a good time tonight. Uh, every Friday night, we do this. Thanks to all of our guests. Thanks to you guys for joining us. Until next week, remember, never, never smoke, smoke alone. alone. We'll see you next alone. week.